Good, ev good evening, everybody, and welcome to the August 11th, 2022 Historic Preservation Commission meeting. This is a regular meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting a copy of the notice on the first floor of the municipal building and by sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. We are also being broadcast live on Channel 34, Montclair TV, and uh, remotely on YouTube. Um, Tommy, could you call the roll, please? Yes, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Tommy. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Bennett? Present. Mr. Heinemann is excused tonight. Mr. Rooney? Here. Mr. Reimnitz? Here. Mr. Graham? Here. Mr. Sweeney is also excused tonight. Mr. Burr? Here. Mr. Connolly? Here. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, first order of business is the approval of minutes from July 14th, 2022. Everyone should have received a copy in the packet. Um, I just have one uh, small correction, uh, not correction, just clarification on page three, where it says roll flex stucco. On the resolution, it's, um, it's a hyphenated word, not just one word. I just thought to keep it all. Um, uh, line 26. Does anyone else have any amendments, comments? No? Was uh, that, that was for the um, oh, reso, not for the, uh, for the, not for the minutes. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, can I have a motion to re uh, approve as amended? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And then we move. I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next is resolution for HPC 2022-18. It is property address at 504 Bloomfield Avenue. Um, that sh would be in your packet as well. Mm -hmm. That was for applied uh, surface to the, uh, the facade. Are there any comments or changes? Uh, just a very minor one. Um, uh, page four, line 25, um, after effects, there should be on, so it should read, uh, did not have any direct or indirect adverse effects on the historic integrity of the nearby Mountain Historic District. No, wait, you're, you don't have, we don't have page four. I think you have a, di a different resolution. We're on 20, 22-18. Oh, no. You know what, Tommy, you were right. That was for the minutes. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I, I apologize. That was oh. for the minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you have Not the resolution. Okay. I, I did read the resolution. I, I didn't have a problem with this. That's right. Okay. I apologize. Do you want to go back to the minutes? Do you have a change on the minutes? That was a change. Yeah, that was actually a change on the minutes, what I just stated. So what do we do then if we already approve the minutes? How do we? Unapprove them. Well, you can <coughs> approve them as amended and take them away. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> sorry about that. State what you want. State what you want to mention. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> apologies, everyone. All right. So page four, line twenty-five. I'd like to add on in between effects and the, so that it reads: uh, did not have any direct or indirect adverse effects on the historic integrity of the nearby Mountain Historic District. Okay. All right. Great. Apologies. Thank you. Okay. So um, <laughs> Re <laughs> motion to approve. Uh, Second. Set all in favor. Aye. Aye. And again. Mr. Remnitz is uh, abstained. abstained. Well, go ahead. Not that was the minutes. The minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, for the last, for the last meeting. For the last meeting. Sure. You were here the last meeting. I thought. Yeah. It should say. It Don't tell me we're going to have to. Says you're absent. According to my minutes, we are not here. <laughs> right. Okay. You're not here. Okay. Go ahead. <coughs> oh. Uh, okay, um, so moving along, public comment. Is anyone here that would like to make? Wait, did we approve the reso? Apologies, not the resolution. We I'm didn't approve, I'm approve sorry. the reso. You threw me off there. Okay. I know. I, this is all my fault. <laughs> okay. I take full responsibility. Yeah. So, any? What about there? Anybody have any amendments to, or changes to the resolution? No. Um, motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimously approved. Thank you. Tommy, I thought you did a good job capturing the reasons why we made this exception. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so moving forward, public, is there anyone here for public comment on a general note, not, not uh, based on an application? No? Yes, right, we have we that. Knew that. We knew that. I've, uh, yeah, I've corrected that. That was a mistake on the first, first issuance of the agenda, but it's corrected. Yeah, I hope you don't expect not people. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, moving along to committee reports, um, we had a minor application meeting, which I didn't attend, for application 2022-26, the gift bar. That was approved with um, uh, recommendations. Um, I'm really happy to report that finally the, design, the residential design guidelines are in the final phase of uh, being um, edited and we will be able to discuss those next month in September along with the brochure. So um, next this week, Tommy will have, has um, offered to uh, adjust what our design guidelines, minor edits to it, and then as soon as we get that done, there are a few more that have come through, Tommy, so, <laughs> but um, that, that would be great. Um, I also report, wanted to report that I met with the archaeologists that the VFA has hired, um, Veterans of Foreign War down uh, the Crawford Cruz um, uh, building on Bloomfield Avenue. They were approved for a demolition because they, they're going to rebuild, and um, there, an archaeologist was called in because there's some evidence that part of the land, the back part of that building, which they want to build on, may contain the graves from some graves from the church that was where the Bullock School was. And if you remember, that there was a big to do about that when they built the school. So I haven't heard yet uh, if they found anything, but hmm. it sounds like they're going to fly either do radar or fly a drone and do a heat um, mm -hmm. um, a survey. Um, and then moving ahead to Bellevue Theater, it would be moving along if anybody sees any uh, activity there. The um, two sides, the west and the east side, the middle staircases that are uh, a, a hazard now, a safety hazard, will be coming down. And the uh, exit uh, will, uh, will be interior when they eventually open, open it up. And the next thing is our demolition, demolition ordinance uh, we've been working on. Thanks to John Reinitz and uh, Jerry Sweeney and Jason Hyman, the, co the vice chair, has been leading the charge on that. So we met today and we have, I think, a good final uh, draft and that will also be in our, our packet for next month. Okay. So I'm hoping that that and the residential design guidelines will get out earlier. Um, so that people have a chance to digest it because it's quite uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, all right, so moving on to old business, uh, application 2022-21554 Valley Road. Oh, great. Good evening. Good evening. And I know you were sworn in before, but could you just tell us your name again? Sure, Craig Dixon. Okay. And I am Melanie fiance. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, great. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, just to refresh everyone's uh, memory, uh, we've been we've looked at this in July, I believe, and um, we've uh, uh, Tom has has done a great report, and um, we were concerned that the uh, turret on the original building had been removed, and it is really a defining feature of this Queen Anne style house. So. Uh, we notice that we see that you've submitted new plans with a proposed turret roof, and um, if you could just walk us through what you're proposing to put up now. Well, the the turret is going to be about the same size as it was, mm -hmm. and it's not going to overhang the driveway, which would be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, conform. Oh, no, it wasn't on, sorry. <laughs> um, so we're going to rebuild the turret and replace the asbestos siding 
and replace the windows. I'm sorry, you're going to remove the asbestos siding, aren't you? Oh, you remove the asbestos siding. Yes, sorry. okay. Yeah, yeah, right. and <laughs> preserve the original clapboard siding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And um, I would just like to, I, on the the um, render the drawings that you've given us, um, it's just a very simple scheme of the door here. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you drive by, I notice that the original door, the original oak door is still on the front door, and I think that's staying, correct? Um, my understanding was that we were going to replace it with something similar. It, oh, it, what's wrong with it? Because it's, it's a beautiful addition to the... Uh... Well, there's just a glass panel. This was not the door, I don't think, that she had originally picked, but it was going to be something similar to the, uh, the existing door. There's a storm door on it, and then behind the storm door, there's an, isn't there an oak door? An old oak door? Original, it looks there, there is an original door, yes. Yeah, it's a si just single glazing. Right, it's here. Very, it's not no, it's not. It's, it's a very old door. Well, with, so with the storm door in front of it, why would you replace that door? Well, it's got about, hundred coats of paint on it um, the it is a single pane glass just in the front and um, could easily be broken into it's not a secure door and it's not a very practical door by today's standards um, okay that was that I, I should open up to questions then but sure, no, that's the, right. to the, that's maybe right. I was the only one that caught that but <coughs> Steve do you have any questions Yes, there is, we're replacing, there's a small window um, where the dotted lines are. Right. And, and then a thin bathroom window where we're going to replace it with a similar sized window to the right of it. Same sized window, actually. Are you through with you? Okay, John? Um, it looks like uh, in, on the Valley Street elevation, you're removing what used to be a uh, residual wood piece of trim. And when you say rebuilding the, uh, the turret, you're not rebuilding, you're, you're building new someplace else. You're not rebuilding. What correct. There, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, it, there's, uh, go to the photographs, go to the photographs, do we have photographs there someplace? Think it makes I'm not that sure what we were. Oh, well, that was originally part of the. That was part of the original turret. Okay. Okay. That <clears throat> for, that that went around as a little colonnade, and that was the first one that was engaged with the house. So. Yeah. We know it's all gone. You're right. <laughs> I would keep that 
piece is what I, I'm suggesting. So okay, well if it's there now, we can certainly yeah yeah it's easy. Keep it. I just saved you a few bucks. Yeah okay. okay. That's okay. Right. <laughs> No other questions. Um, Mike. Um, just is the turret height, the new height, matching the old? Yes. Height, it is matching yes. the whole because it looks the, like it's. The architect said it's the same size. Okay, because perhaps it's just the angle of this. It looks like it exceeded the height of the original roof, and this looks like it's even with it. Um, I just want to make sure we confirm. If there's a way to confirm sure that, we do. Um, there we go. I would ask if you look at. I mean, it's slightly higher. If you look at the, the, you look at the drawing, look, it, well, it just <coughs> tips it. But it looks like it was. I mean, it was the distinguishing feature yeah, yeah. of the home initially. Um, and I think that height. I think the um, picture that they have that because it was set out a little bit. But the, the but height is what really gave it that. Um, you know, drew the eye to it. But Tom, what do you think? Is it the angle, or is it that uh, the turret was? To me, it looks taller. It looks taller, right? The original. Yeah. So the original I would just think my, my one thing would just be um, let's confirm the height same of the size. original right, and keep right. the same height. Yeah. yeah. We had discussed that with Paul okay. Sohanis. Okay, so great. Yeah. And I know, right, because I know it's kind of shrinking in width a little bit, right, because it's not jutting out anymore. Let's at least keep the, the height if we can do that. Sure. Okay, so that's the height of the turret to remain the same as the original. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to suggest we should it should stay the same shape by because I think the actual shape, the new shape is smaller <coughs> than the old shape. So if you try to uh, get it as high, it, this is going to look completely different than that. So I'm John, do you proportionally it should look like the old one. So it looks John, to me like the slope of the exist the old old turret is steeper than this one. So I'm just saying proportionally. So they keep it small, you think? Uh, or I'm saying proportionally it should okay. be right. relate to what was there before. Okay. I realize it's taller, but it's on a smaller base, so the shapes, you can't just say match the height. It's I right. see. So the shape, yeah. yeah. to the best of it, as, as possible, yeah. shape you know, and height. Yeah. Right now, it just doesn't, I, I would just make it a little steeper. Okay. Grow it a foot and a half or something, and okay. I think, yeah. Yeah. So the height and the slope of the turret to remain the same as the Well, original. I think the height um, will depend on the shape a little bit, if yeah. correct? Yeah. 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 So it should still be a little taller, not necessarily match the height, but match the slope, I think is, right. is what the we're saying, right? The match the slope. Okay, the okay. slope of the turret to remain the yeah. same as the original. And the pilot. So, so maybe a little judge, shorter. But, or yeah. I don't know if you have any drawings of the original, but the funny mm -hmm. thing is this doesn't <laughs> it's the same building. This looks like a straight on mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my question, of course, is about the door. That I think that original door. I didn't. I haven't gone up to it. I haven't looked at it. Um, but I know uh, I have a solid oak door on my house with a single pane, and it's worked with uh, with a storm door in front of it, and it has a double lock on it, and it's it's been fun. Are you saying it's not the original door or? It's just a thinner. Well, I'm not sure if it's an original door. It's just an <coughs> old, yeah, uh, I guess, dilapidated door. I mean, you know, <laughs> most of this house is falling apart. Right. You have to understand the front porch is falling off. Right. And you know, we're uh, willing to invest a tremendous amount of money in renovating it, replacing all the windows which are old and uninsulated. You know, and we figured the door would also be replaced with a. A secure door with insulated glass. Was the door part of the application? Because I didn't look at it. <coughs> I don't think so. Not to to change it, but I, if it's in. It's not in the drawings. It's no, I don't. Yeah. To change it, but if it's in the historic district, the doors are. Yeah. I'm just saying it, it wasn't noted on the application that it was being changed, right? Excuse me, Tommy. That's right. Yeah. Did uh, Melanie? Yeah. Discuss the door. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. I have, I have images of windows, but I don't have anything about doors. Okay. Then maybe she intends on keeping. Oh well, and it would be if you stripped it, and <laughs> it would be. <laughs> yeah. And replace another, the glass. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you'd make out better with it. I I just think it has a particular look to it that. Uh, I mean, it's got a screen door that's falling off in front of it. I mean, it, you know, an aluminum door from 
1970 or something. I'm not talking yeah. about that. Tour. No, I know. So, <laughs> I know. so whatever's behind there. Yeah. Right. Uh, 30 years. <laughs> okay. But uh, if we can preserve the original door, then I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions of the applicant? No? Uh, okay, Tom, uh, you're on. <laughs> I didn't have anything, really. Okay. Uh, I was fine with the application. But you agree, do you agree with the door? Th uh, that the... Uh, yeah, the original door, if it's the original door, the door that's there should be retained. Um, it could be stripped and... I mean, it's got an old door knob on it that needs... I mean, all the hardware would need to yeah. be replaced and everything else. Can so. be done. Yeah, thank and you. And I have to, obviously, replace the glass with insulated tempered glass. Right. Is there a vestibule when you first walk into the yeah, house? It's a hallway. It's a center hallway. You're right into the, <coughs> into yeah, the, right into the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, discussion. Steve? I think that, yeah, it's, it's great that you've come back to the conical roof Thanks. and to make it look like the, the original design. It's not, it's not exactly. Oops. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you yeah, know, Refurbish the door and the side lights, but replace all the windows. John? Um, I don't have a problem with you replacing the door. First of all, I don't think you're going to get insulated glass. and uh, Your okay. comment there is not going to happen. Okay. So, but I don't, I don't have a, I have a problem with the way it's drawn on the elevation. It's mm -hmm. missing the lower pan. I would say if, here's my opinion. Uh, that if you replaced it in kind as a wood door with a recessed panel at the bottom, insulated, you're changing out all the windows anyway. Mm -hmm. I'd just as soon see you make it all hang together. So okay. well, that was that, right that's that's my mm -hmm. um, what I would say about that. And uh, I, I guess appreciate that you're responding to our comments about the turret and um, appreciate that. Sure. Uh, Thank you. I also appreciate that you've responded to our comments and come back with what you have, but um, I'm still going to go for that door, <laughs> the original door, if it can be if it can be salvaged, salvageable. Well, how do we <clears throat> determine that? I mean, can we can we send pictures to the committee of, of sure, proposed? Sure, we could, Yes, the way we, we'll door? come. In, we'll come visit you. How's that? <clears throat> okay. We'll that's come fine. look at it. Okay. Yeah. So just get in touch with Tommy, and um, we'll we'll. Okay. Right. That, that sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Mike. Yeah, and like I said, my only issue was just the height or slope of the turret. I, I like overall the design and appreciate um, putting that, uh, you know, distinguishing characteristic back. Sure. Okay, so um, I believe we have three conditions, Tommy. Um, do, do, should, do you want to read them all? <laughs> I don't have them written down, but oh, I'll summarize Oh, that's okay. Them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking notes, but I don't have them written. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. So the pilaster, which is part of that, which is already on the on the building, is to remain. What did um, you call that? I'm sorry. The pilaster. The pilaster. Pilaster at the second floor. Okay. On the front elevation. Um, the uh, slope of the turret to remain the same as the original. And uh, preserve the door if you can and refurbish it. And if it's not possible to um, get in touch with Tommy and someone will come out and have a look at it. And at that point, you should have in hand a, a picture of at least what you want the, uh, to replace it with. Okay, so preserve door or? A refurbished, refurbished door. Okay. Okay, so we don't have a resolution for this yet, correct, Tommy? This is a, it's a C of A, but. Is that what they normally determine? No, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm a, we haven't voted on it yet. So, uh, yeah, okay, so, okay. So, um, uh, um, would somebody like to make a motion to, uh, approve with the conditions that I just stated? Motion to approve with the conditions. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Right, Look forward to seeing, seeing, seeing it you. finished. Thank you. Right. thank you. Really, guys. thanks for working with us. Sure. Have a good night. You good too. Night. Uh, next up is application HPC 2022-25 for Duryea Road. Um, this is a very big project. <laughs> um, so for Duryea Road, known as the Eustace House after the original owner, is a two and a, and a half story single family dwelling constructed in 1888 in the shingle style. This house was identified in the architecture of the uh, rep representative styles theme in the 1986 Montclair Multiple Resources Survey. The Historic Preservation Commission designated this as a local landmark in 2006. Notable architectural features include three chimneys, hip roof dormers, cylindrical turret with conical roof, recessed balconies, and piazza front porch. Um, they're, this is uh, going, they're requesting a certificate of appropriateness because it is in the Upper Montclair, it's in the proposed Upper Montclair commuter district. Oh wait, is this, this is a certificate of appropriateness though, isn't it? It has its own individual landmark. R oh, status. okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's the individual. So the property, yes, that was my next sentence. The property was individually surveyed as part of Preservation Montclair as well as nominated for historic designation under the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Um, there's quite a number of um, site improvements and um, the ones that really are, that we are going to be looking at are the ones that are visible from the from the right of way. So um, uh, let's let me just see read what they are. That would be construct a back entrance patio and a new kitchen garden. Const I'm sorry, those are the minimal visible ones. The ones that we will be looking at are the um, reconstruct and realign the main driveway along the north side of the house construct a new horseshoe, horseshoe driveway with Belgian block curbing, install a new walkway from the horseshoe driveway to a new rectangular bluestone patio at the foot of the um, uh, stairs, install black iron railings at the front porch between the existing column bases and at the stairs, construct a trash enclosure screened by shrubs adjacent to the bumped out portion of the driveway to the north and installed new lighting, um, replacing a hanging fixture in the front porch, ceiling mounted fixtures in the second and third floor balconies, landscape lighting, post lighting, and pathway lighting. So those are the things that we are looking at because those are the things that would be visible from the right of way. There are additional things that uh, you are proposing as well. And as I understand it, none of this requires a variance that you're before us for C of A. Okay. So would you identify yourself in your relationship to the... Uh, My name is Jonathan Perlstein. My office is Oasis Architecture in Montclair, New Jersey. And um, the architect working with the interior designers and the clients. Thank you. Thanks. Um, do we have... Uh, some images up, Tommy, of this project. Is it that? Um, again, my my report is not up on the computer. Oh, okay. So, and that's where the pictures are. Oh. Yeah. Actually, wait. Hold on. Let me see. I might have. Uh, email to. because we're in council chambers. Right. Or um do you don't have a, a control that you can No. No. Okay. <laughs> 
So um, why don't you describe maybe the project? We'll go through the pictures on the screen, okay? Well, this is the second time we're involved with this house. Mm -hmm. the, um, that family room addition that's to the right was something that we did back around 2007, oh. okay. that whole addition. At the same time, we um, replaced all the windows to match the existing, and we rebuilt, partially rebuilt the rear porch, which is not visible from the street. It's, uh, sort of tucked away behind the house. Uh, it was a full house renovation. It's actually a very interesting house in that there's an attic on top of the attic. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a two and two half story house or what it is, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's huge. Um, but back then, you know, people, and they still do, they seem to want to be towards the back of the building. So as big as it was, it didn't have a family room. So we gave them a family room. And now this is the uh, third owner who's doing all this work. They're doing a, a whole nother rebuild on the inside. And they're really changing very little of the house itself that you can see from the street. Um, the, the most predominant thing that uh, you would see from the street would be their uh, desire to add railings to the porch. And I'll call that the front porch even though it's on the side because the house originally fronted on, I think it was Lorraine, and everything was filled in around it. And um, the other, uh, from what I read over here anyway, the other issue had to do with the roofing material of the pool house. Mm -hmm. And then I could just talk about the enclosure to the trash, which would be a fence like all the other fences that have been detailed, only shorter. Um, Tommy, are there any other images, or are these the only two? Yeah. There's a turret. We, now, we didn't change the turret. That's the original turret. Oh, right. Enough, you know. and, uh, and that's uh, where the, the curb cut will be. For well, the, the curb cut's going to be in the front here. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's only a driveway um, to the north. And they would like, and that's the addition we did, and they, they would like the uh, semicircular driveway off of uh, Duria Road. Could you go back, Tommy, a, a second? Because where the van is, is that where the proposed pool house is? No, it's even further back than that. OK. Yeah. It's quite far back. It's almost to the, um, the far, you know, the far west reaches of the, of the uh, site. It would be kind of hard to see it from the street. It's a rather diminutive structure. Mm. Um, in fact, most of what's being proposed is you know, flat work and low walls and things like that. And and then, of course, the uh, pathway across yes. to, from the front, which that's will be right. a different a, a, a bluestone. I don't remember. Yeah, bluestone. That's when I, I should have been clear when I said flat work. I meant you know different types of paving, you know, walkways and driveways. And okay. Types, and these are you know traditional details, bluestone walkways mm -hmm. are very mm -hmm. traditional in town, the Belgian block trim driveways are, you know, even the streets are that way in town. Mm. Thank you're, you, Tommy. You're also proposing a number of new exterior lighting fixtures, right? For That's the, correct. Uh, we furnished the Walkway cuts. lighting. Yeah. And lighting on the building, right? Right. Is there a, do you have an image of the, of the uh, original, the historic photo that's in the black yeah, and white. the old black and white. Yeah, it's uh, it's um, in your presentation. Yeah. There you go. Can you enlarge that? Well, that's better than what it was. <laughs> when we first got involved, it was that comet green thing that you see next to it there. It was, there was a doctor's office in there. It was all kind of chopped up inside. And that was my uh, pediatric allergist. That's where I took my yeah, children. Was. Yeah, I remember <laughs> it was some kind of doctor. I mean. OK, great. Thank you. So I mean, it's still, I mean, still the same house, just the windows were replaced in kind. It was painted. Um, the, uh, those recessed balconies up in the attic, we put in fiberglass floors. You can't see them from the street anyway. 
Uh, in fact, the only windows we didn't replace were the ones in the turret because they're all curved mm -hmm. and they were extraordinarily expensive. So they're, they're still the old single glazed windows over there on the left. Those were <coughs> Those were replaced? You Those were, were the ones that weren't replaced. Those oh, okay. Were the only ones I, was, that I thought replace. I heard. I missed yeah, it. sorry about that. I okay. Work on my diction here. Um, yeah. No, it's a beautiful house. It's, it really it's is. It's really something. Uh, the whole base on the right there is that uh, it looks like basalt or something. It looks like they just sort of blasted First Mountain and brought it over there. And, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and the same thing happens along the. Um, porch mm -hmm. all that work to either side of the stairs there were a series of stone plinths mm -hmm. and then the whole underside there and the columns sit on that okay thank you mm -hmm. um, so we'll open it up for questions to commissioners Steve do you have any questions question um, you're putting in new railings on the porch where? We're glad to talk about that because <laughs> currently there are no railings on the porch. There's only one handrail on the stoop and it's not an original handrail. It looks like your standard handrail. Yeah, okay. And the client had wanted those iron rails all around. But then I see that there is some concern about that, so which I understand. So it's just porch just ends. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that holds anybody on the porch. No. No. So that's unless you're leaning against one of the columns. Right. Right. Okay. So how long have the railings not been on the porch? You've worked on the I've building never seen railing on the porch. Okay. So you've never seen railing. Yeah. And if you go there now, I just checked it today. You can't even see right. scarring along the deck boards. You can't see any evidence of fasteners. But they were there in the historic. They were there right. way back, but yep. by the time we got around to it in 2007, they were long gone. Oh, and um, oddly <coughs> enough, back then, the building department didn't even ask for any, even though the, the porch is more than 30 inches above grade. Is it? And that, once was you gonna, have that was going to be my next question, yeah. When you have that, then you have to do a 36-inch high guardrail. Not necessarily. If it's a historic building under the right. rehab code. Except if it's an historic building. Right. Which but we didn't do it. There were no rails installed at the time. Right. Yeah. And uh, currently, you know, in terms of the datum, all the old houses had lower rails. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't have mm. three foot high rails. Oh, yeah. Um, 18 inch. I see in the old picture there was some kind of railing. Um, and I couldn't quite make it out on my copy. Uh, but the, the plinths that hold up the double columns, the stone plinths, are about two and a half feet high. So if you were to do a three foot rail, it would be ugly, right? Right. Um, and um, the current design, I understand, is a bit, uh, there's, there was some concern uh, about that design by the board. Yeah, I brought up the concern, actually. I, my, my comment was that the proposed metal railings at the front porch are not appropriate for the architectural style of the house. And based on the photograph, they look like they were wood railings. And they were wood railings, yeah, back then. Well, if you, uh, so you think the building department would be fine with them being lower? I think so, for a historic building under rehab code. Um, yeah. Because yeah. the, the client is aware of that, that the f it's an issue that was raised. And uh, they haven't um, reviewed any alternative railing, uh, but they're willing to do so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Any other questions, Steve? No. John? Um, you're also building this little structure in the back as well, right? The pool house. Your pool house. Yeah. Did you say that? I thought you said everything was flat back there as well. Yeah, Did except for that. I must have said it too quickly. Sorry about that. Um, do I have any questions? But the railing you're showing is not 36 inches high in any of that, right? Sorry? Right now you're showing something, you're sh I'm sorry, you're showing a railing that's two foot four high off the, so you're not at 36 in any event, right? Yeah. So um, I never heard of this historic uh, rehab, ex you know, mm -hmm. for life safety issues that they would allow that. Uh, no, that, that, that 
there is a rehab subcode to the UCC, and if you, if, I forget what section, but it specifically allows you to reconstruct stairs at the historic tread and riser size, so they could be taller um, if there was evidence. Yeah, well, there's pretty good evidence. And it's speci it's specifically there. for historic structures. So, okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Um, uh, you're proposing new gutters, correct? Are they copper? Copper. Uh, all, all copper gutters. All copper. And leaders, right? And then somewhere I read in here, I can't find it now, about heaters. Oh yes. In those balconies up on top, those recessed balconies up in the attic, they are installing in the ceiling a recessed heater. It basically will look like a slit on the street if you could even see it at all. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess they want to sit out there on winter nights. I don't know. <laughs> on the two balcony, there are two balconies, there are aren't there? Two. There's one on, on the Duryea the side, side, and then there's right. one on the uh, the street facing uh, the gable end. Is a, is a balcony and the one in the middle there too. Um, so yeah. they'll be flush with this with They'd the ceiling height. It's, it's a beadboard ceiling and they would be flush. They would just be a reveal. Okay. Um, <coughs> those are my questions. Thank you. Uh, regarding the the circular driveway, mm -hmm. um, are there any other? Homes, I, I'm not, sh I don't think I believe I've seen any, but are there any homes in the neighborhood that have circular driveways? Not in that neighborhood. Um, there might be um, further up. Other than the, the church. Thing is the, really yeah. Like. The thing is, this house is so much bigger than any of the other houses in the area. No, there's definitely more frontage than the other ones, yeah. yes. And you also, but it's, it's odd, right? It's also the yeah. side of the home, right? Not the front. Uh, it's not yeah, really. It's, it's turned into the right. front, even though it's the side. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a circular driveway on the side of the house. Yeah. Um, and then it has a, a, a dog leg that goes to the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, are there other um, homes in town with a similar setup? There are setup many homes in town with, with a similar setup. With two curb cuts, sure. No, no, I know, but. Um, on this, essentially on the side of the house, the house is now turned. Well, it's only because of this, the circumstance of this particular house. It was not intended to. No, I, I yeah. understand. I'm just wondering if there's any other precedent. I don't, I, the only other house I know in town that faces sideways is on Valley Road. There's an old uh, brownstone faced, looks like an old Dutch farmhouse. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. uh, across from those garden apartments that's just south of the uh, Acme. And it's up on a bluff, and it's uh -huh. face, it faces sideways because it probably predates the grid, the street grid, just right. like this house did. Right. So there's not that many. Yeah. There's there's one at 136 Upper Mountain, which yeah. you guys reviewed for the fence right. height variance. They have a horseshoe driveway on the side of the house. On the side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good memory, Tommy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was uh, yeah. my only thought. In the, from the public. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll st open it up to discussion. So Steve? Um, it's a very subtle change, actually. I mean, and it's going to be great for people walking around, driving in, the use of the exterior, the pools, and all that stuff. But from the street, it's not going to look that much different. And I think it's going to be fine. It'll be nice. Um, thank you. thank you. I neglected to ask Tom to, I think he had a few more comments. Sorry. Yeah, we talked about the railing, so the, the material of the railing and the height of the railing. Um, my other comment had to do with the, the proposed trash enclosure. There were no yeah, details I would, or I would, information. I would put on the record that it would match the other fencing. It just would be Which is? It would be a wood cedar fence, okay. but it would be shorter than the yep. others. Um, yeah, all the fences are cedar on this, except for the ones that are metal around the pool. Right. Yeah. Um, then my last comment had to do with the proposed material for the new pool pavilion. Uh, the drawing says slate, and I question, I'm questioning whether it should be slate or um, wood shingle or asphalt. Um, 
based on yeah. the architectural style, right? The shingle style would have had yeah. in this photograph, the historic uh, photograph looks like wood shingle to me. What <laughs> I uh, understand is that the client doesn't want to look out on a 40 year timberline roof. So they just thought slate would be nice. But mm -hmm. to go with the existing architectural style would, yeah. would work better. Uh, I'll run it by them, see if they'll accept that. That was it. I mean, the house itself now is all the, you know. Right, but originally line. it was wood shingle and to yeah. go with the architectural is it going? It's already a higher quality roof, right? Right. But slate wouldn't have been on a, a shingle style building. Mm -hmm. And it's a one story pool pavilion, correct? That's all it is, yeah. So you would be able to see, it would be more visible f from the lawn than what this higher roof would be. So I think that's a Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll be able to see it from some of the windows. Yeah. Um, mm. And it, it is a 12 on 12 roof, you know, so it's not like a roof that you're not going to see much, you know, it's got a high profile. Okay. So, thank you. Steve, considering that, um, any other further questions after Tom's no. comments? John. No questions. Uh, these are questions? Questions. No, I thought we went through questions. It's sorry. comments, sorry. Yeah, comments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started this tonight. Yeah, started. <laughs> I did. Yes. I thought I was here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with Tom on rebuilding the uh, railings. There's enough information that they should be wood and span between the stone uh, bases of those columns. Uh, if, if indeed you have that historic rehab I'm going to use that a little bit more <laughs> mm -hmm. it's specifically for historic buildings uh, um, so you can't use it everywhere uh, I can understand the reason for the mm. new driveway because you really don't come in the front door do you You can really access the front door from the driveway right when, uh, no it's a bit really of a walk back door all the time yeah right? that would be the right Mm -hmm. Well, they could go either way, but you know, typically people live now, they want to go through the back door, you know, and drop mm -hmm. stuff yeah, off. But you, it's <coughs> impossible. To, let's put it this way. You <laughs> can't get to the front door very easily. No, you have to walk a bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I understand the driveway. Um, yeah, I went by the house today. Uh, it's a great house. Um, I don't have any other Um, I th I think the circular driveway fits in very well with the house in the neighborhood. It almost it it um, brings to mind almost a um, carriage path, you know. And so on the side, it doesn't bother me because it's um, you almost can read the house as having a, a porte cochere. Um, I do agree though with Tom with the railings. I think they should be of wood and is similar to. Uh, what is in the historic photo in terms of height and how they're um, positioned between the the, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, columns and I also agree with Tom about the roof that the uh, for mm -hmm. the pool pavilion that that yeah. should be um, changed to either probably wood shingles and we know yeah. that wood shingles are allowed in in they use I just saw a big project in Glen Ridge where they did a whole roof and shingles and wood shingles and it's got all the shapes and all that in there so mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, that might be. It wasn't nice. our project, but uh, it was pretty nice, you know. Right. It was uh, really nice. I was right on Ridgewood Avenue. Oh. And well I that's think there's another one up on um, uh, one of those streets up on the hill there. I forgot the name of it. Where they did a whole new um, wood shingle roof. Wood shingle roof, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I don't know which house that. Uh, I think it's uh, Highland, uh, not Highland. One of those streets up there, anyway. And, and you don't see much of it because, you know, after a while it begins to curl up and right. stuff. You know, right. it doesn't really... Well, I think having a small, especially a pavilion w with a wood shingled mm -hmm. roof, if you could do something decorative on it, would mm -hmm. be fabulous. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, if you want, just to go back to the railing, if that's okay, and it's sure. turn and all. But judging from that photo, there are no rails to either side of the stairs, just those stone right. plinths. Uh, so I don't think... Do they... Are they requesting a railing on the no, um, we're well, talking about the, uh, the the balustrades right but but they're they're only there they're not on the stoop they're in that photo is all I'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, it's not like you're asking me to do that on the stoop as well 
not, well it's never you, there no. yeah but if you do um, put a wood r r uh, railing around the the porch and it's wood you would have to somehow coordinate that with railing on the s on the steps yeah I mean we'd like to just leave what's there I mean it's just been there forever I was just gonna say why can't you leave it you just leave it I mean the, the client wanted there. that more elaborate design right. that you saw mm -hmm. right. that's only on one side it's a very minimalistic thing right. and if you think about it, it a wood would not be appropriate there because it would mask all those really good-looking stone mm -hmm. buttresses on either side whereas what they have there now is a simple black painted iron rail when you kind of look through it and you see the it's that is that in on one of the pages here no that's just it's, it's hard to see it's on this side here I took a picture of it today if you want to see that it's right there oh so what's up there now you're propo you're not proposing to keep that though are you what's up there now on mm -hmm. the stoop no he's pr proposing a metal rail um, well, we were proposing a metal rail on the stoop and on the this there. porch. This porch. But if you go to wood, I don't think it would work too well on the stoop. No, I, I, I would just leave what's there and put the wood no, that's wood good. on the porch. Leave the handrail on the on the stair. On the stair. Oh, I, I'm um, sorry. You know what? When I saw this, I thought I didn't even realize this. I thought that was the other back I, entry. I didn't uh, realize yeah. it was the back this. is all this sort of hefty cedar thing going. Okay. On. Yeah. Well, then. This wouldn't work with this type of, I mean, a railing like that, yeah. that was almost invisible, would work better than. Yeah, I would just leave those. Well, like mm -hmm. I said, yeah. the client is willing to reconsider. You right. Know, the more thought has been given to this, you know, right. since those drawings were made. Right. So I would not um, mm -hmm. put the railing on the stairs. What's uh, that? Um, so we discussed railing, shingles. Oh, and I just wanted to compliment. I think the paving materials that you're using are very appropriate uh, the, with the uh, yeah. the blue stone and the and the. Uh, I know there's some question about curbing the brick, but you know whether or not that's a ritual. But it, it really adds a lot to the to the look of the house. The blue stone's great. You know, it's, mm. it's all over town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a natural material mm. for our town. Yes, I know. We have our still <laughs> sidewalks. Uh, those are my comments. Uh, yeah, I uh, I know I was harping on the uh, circular driveway, but um, it's because it's a unique feature for the block. But then again, the house itself is a unique feature on the block. It's uh, very grand, stands out uh, very well. So um, I think um, I think I'm comfortable with it, and given that there is some precedent for it in town. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with it, but overall, it's a beautiful home, and uh, I uh, appreciate the designs overall. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then you also gave us a cut sheets on um, the uh, lighting. 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 Uh, we <coughs> nobody's commented on that yet. Has anybody have any comments on? No. Everyone likes it. Okay. I think I think it's very appropriate to it. Yeah. All right, so it's, uh, I think we're um, all in agreement that with the um, improvements that, that we can uh, look at. Uh, which can are I ask, can, you, can we get some kind of an approval for most of the work and like some kind of subcommittee assemble for the Yes, that would, uh, that's yeah. a, that, so what I was going, we'll approve, if, if we all agree, if my fellow commissioners mm -hmm. agree, we uh, move for approval tonight with the three conditions, which are the, um, uh, railings that we've discussed, the wood shingles on the pavilion, and the uh, tra the enclosure for the trash, but yeah. the fencing be the same. So those, those are the three yeah. main. Um, I think your lighting, I think your paving, I think the driveway really suits the, the, the house. So if there's anything that, um, the question about the railing on the stairs, uh, you can certainly come back to us and we can discuss that, not in full committee. Uh, yeah. We can. C contact Tommy and then um, somebody from the minor applications will be in touch with you and we'll come and look at it we like to look at houses <laughs> 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 so uh, those are the three conditions Tom Can you or, repeat them just sure um, railings uh, we discussed wood as near to the uh, historic photograph and the height uh, th and, the height. and height 
um, wood shingles uh, for the roof for the p uh, pool pavilion and the trash enclosures to have the same um, fencing as what the cedar fencing that's on the uh, rest of the property. Yes, and in terms of uh, the railing, is is that any? Is there anything else you think that we would have to see before? Uh, I mean, we'll give you the. It'll be approved, but we just would like to look at it too. Sure. I mean, they could, Jonathan could probably create a drawing what he would propose, and we could look at that before you know sooner than later too. So. <laughs> right. And you can email it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we just kind of meet at the site with a little sketch. Sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, are we all in agreement then for approval with those three conditions? So would yeah. someone like to, uh, this is a C of A, so we have to have a, a motion? Right. Uh, I move to approve the resolution, or the um, um, C, of a. C of A with those three, con with those three conditions. Second? A second. second. Yep. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all very Thanks. much. I, uh, that's my neighborhood. So, uh, Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> nice. I've always loved that house. It's a beautiful house tonight. Yeah, it, was, it was Dr. Marini, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he died about, he died, he was a prisoner of ours, and he died about 12 years ago. And actually, his wife, his wife, uh, she just had her funeral last month. Oh. It's too bad. Um, we could have asked her about that. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let me just get organized here. Okay. Next up is application 2796 192 Bellevue Avenue. Um, that's a mixed site plan and bulk variance for an addition to a mixed use building. Hi, Paul. So before, let me just uh, add a little bit more information. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, it's at 192 Bellevue Avenue. The applicant proposes to move the existing building closer to Bellevue Avenue and construct a, a 5,300 square foot two-story addition over parking in the rear of the existing building. A new 12 space parking lot will be provided behind the building along with the new trash enclosed enclosure and landscape front lawn um, this property is located in the upper Montclair uh, edge district and it, it land use district in the unified land use and circulation plan the plan states that this district should provide a small-scale dense area where single-family Homes, apartments, and professional office buildings mix to create an urban village where residents may commute primarily on transit. And hold on. As I as we can see from the site map that's up now. I'm sorry. Um, it, it is a uh, interior lot located on the south side of Bellevue Avenue and contains a two and a half story circa 1889 Queen Anne house. Uh, the property is within the Upper Montclair Historic District and the building is listed as a contributing resource which means it retains uh, architectural and or historic importance and visually contributes to the cohesiveness of the district streetscape. Now, we are not reviewing this for a C of A. We're actually reviewing this as a zoning board uh, referral because there are many um, variances that go along with, with this, which I won't go into at this point. Sorry, Catherine. Well, there's four, there's not many, four. <laughs> okay, I thought there's one variance. Oh. It's just the use variance. Following bulk variances and waivers on page 11, I don't have that in front of me, but my understanding was just the, to be allowed to continue the real estate office on the first floor. Oh, I have uh, four variances, but you know what? 
uh, we don't we don't, don't do we don't do that. So I just wanted to state that there were more variances than I'm sorry. I was actually looking at another application that there were like ten variances. There are only four variances. They're on page eleven of our planning mm -hmm. report. Okay, um, and uh, I guess that is the introduction to this. And we welcome Mr. Sionis, the architect. But I think you should um, identify yourself for the record. Okay, my name is Paul Sionis. Paul Sionis. I'm an architect. I don't think it's on. Battery died on this one. Okay. So I'm um, Paul Sionis, architect. Um, yeah, here it goes. Well, no. I think it's on. Yeah. No, just have a, a sore throat. So, um, I'm the principal of Sionis Architecture for 36 years. Um, our office is located at 8 Hillside Avenue. Um, that's it. Thank you. All right. So, um, Paul, we have uh, the site map up. Of, is this the Existing site map? Co correct. So that's the existing survey map to which color was added for better visibility. So I have a, a short PowerPoint presentation. Oh, great. Um, to explain the project. So the site is 192 Bellevue Avenue. It's uh, located on the south side of Bellevue Avenue, just to the east of Northview Avenue. The lot size is about 0.2. Oh, okay. The lot size is about 0.25 acres. It has a lot width of 70 feet, the lot depth of 150 feet. And as you noted, the property is improved with a two and a half story building that has been used as real estate offices. Most of the lot is covered with asphalt paving as you can see from the site plan and as you'll see from photographs. Um, the rear paving is not striped, but the majority of the parking is in the front yard between the building and the front property line. Uh, currently, there's one driveway on the east, which is the left, um, leading to the rear, and one driveway on the right. Um, there's also a driveway belonging to the garden apartment complex to the left or to the east. Um, so the garden apartment complex does not have any parking spaces. It has 35 units and it has a single nine foot wide driveway, as you can see, leading partially to the back of the property. Um, we think it's perhaps for service or for moving trucks. The, um, the garden apartment was constructed in the late 1930s. Um, well, I'll continue, sorry. Okay, it's on. Got it. So this is a, a Bing satellite 3D view of the neighborhood. You can see the subject property uh, labeled as 192. To the left or to the east is the 35 unit garden apartment complex uh, built in uh, 1939. Uh, directly to the right or to the west is the two story cornerstone building that was originally built as a gasoline station. Uh, now it's the cornerstone building um, for to help families with Down syndrome. Directly across the street is a four-story apartment building and also St. Cassian's Church. To the west of the four-story apartment building is a, a group of, of retail stores, a, a one restaurant, barbershop. Next slide. This is a, a Google Earth street view and you can see the existing building um, as viewed from Bellevue Avenue. And you can see that asphalt covers the majority of the lot, including the front yard, with the exception of the building. Uh, and as Kathleen said, the property is located in the Upper Montclair Historic District, and it's also with the, within the NC Neighborhood Commercial Zone District. Um, okay, next slide. These are photographs uh, taken by, by me last August. And you can see the top left is the front of the building surrounded by what I would call a sea of asphalt. Um, and the building is set back from the adjoining adjoiner's building to the west, which is the cornerstone stone building. It's also set back from the facade of the garden apartment complex. Top right photograph is, is the rear of the building. Uh, you can see the, the paving continues all around the property. Um, the bottom left is a 
view of the front yard, all of the paving, and that's where the uh, parking is and currently. And then the bottom right photograph is the space between this, uh, this subject property and the garden apartment complex to the, to the east. Uh, slide number five. Uh, this is a, a photograph obtained from the owner of the property. So according to the township records, and as Kathleen noted, the building was constructed around 1889. It's a listed as a contributing building within the Upper Montclair Historic District. And based on this 1956 photo, the building was a real estate office, Walter Johnson Realtors, with a, a landscape front yard. And the facade from this photograph was clad with oversized um, cedar shingles. So uh, we estimate that these are 13 to 14 inch exposure to the cedar shingles, which is similar to the Upper Montclair Women's Club at Cooper Northview, which was designed by Francis Nelson and completed in 1924. And in the records, Francis Nelson played a part on, in this building, but not, at, not in 1889, but years later. Next slide. Slide number um, six is taken from the mid-1960s. Uh, and this was a Walter Johnson Realtors postcard that they would send out. Um, so it was still a real estate office in the mid-1960s, um, but much of the property now was paved over with asphalt. The shingles are still visible. Um, the windows are primarily one over one, all of the, the double-hung windows. And then between the 1960s and this 2004, historic site inventory, the building was covered with aluminum siding, a small front porch was added to the front left, and all, all the original details were lost. The, um, so the applicant's goal is to improve the appearance of the building and the site. Uh, from day one, he said he'd love to get rid of that front yard parking. It's ugly as anything. Um, so we discussed removing the front yard parking and the paving, limit the real estate office to the first floor only because the real estate business, at least at this Century 21, which is currently there, doesn't need as much space. Realtors share the desks. A lot of it is done digitally. Um, and in turn, he asked about adding residential units to the property, to the building. So we, we studied the allowable density, and based on density, uh, six units would be allowed to be placed on this property. However, six seemed like too many, so we settled on four units. And, and it's a great place to live. It's close to the train, close to the bus lines, walking distance to the stores, religious facilities, and schools. So based on our George Hotel project, um, we contacted the same building moving company, which was Wolf, Wolf House Movers. They came and looked at the building. They looked at the site and determined that this building could be moved forward so we could uh, provide a landscape front yard and put all of the parking in the back of the building. Um, so the building is proposed to be moved forward by about 26 feet up to the allowable front yard setback, which is 20 feet. So it's proposed to, to comply with all of the setbacks, but we place the parking in the rear. So as I said, all of the parking would be moved to the rear, and then there'd be a two-story addition above part of the parking. And you can see on this slide, the addition is shown in dark gray above part of the parking lot. Um, and as I said, four, four new apartments or four dwelling units would be created since the real estate office would be limited to the first floor, which is 1,250 square feet, uh, the second and third floor of the existing building, plus the two stories of the addition uh, would would form the envelope for the four new apartments or four new dwelling units. Um, we're providing the required number of parking spaces for this mixed use, the 1,250 square feet of office plus the four apartments. It requires 12 spaces. We're providing 11 spaces plus one electric vehicle ready parking stall, which gives you a credit for an extra space. Um, so this complies with parking. Um, and to the east on this property, the left side of the slide, you could see that nine foot wide driveway for the garden apartment complex 
that that will remain because that's on the garden apartment complex's property. Prior to the Development Review Commission, uh, we had the building um, a little further back than this. But at the Development Review Commission, it was suggested that we move the building as far forward as we're allowed to by zoning to save all of the existing evergreen trees that surround the rear of the property. So the rear of the property has these 10 to 12 foot tall arborvitae, and they're only gonna get taller, uh, and they form a good screen for, for the surrounding neighbors. Next slide is, is a portion of the landscape plan. So the site will be landscaped, and for the first time in over 60 years, the front yard will be landscaped. No more asphalt. Um, all of the plantings that we're calling for will be native to New Jersey. As I said, there's existing evergreens along the, the rear and the, uh, the rear south and the right, which is the west side. Those are the arborvitae that are 10 to 12 feet tall. We're calling for new evergreens along the left side or east, um, which would grow to 25 to 30 feet tall, not only to screen the view of the underside of the addition, but also to screen the view of the, the garden apartment from the people living in, in this building, this new building. Um, and then, as I said, that, that existing nine foot wide driveway that belongs to the garden apartment complex, that remains, but currently that's combined with asphalt on our subject property, so there's this really large expanse of asphalt at the front besides the, the entire front yard being paved. So the first floor, as I said, historically, as far back as we could go, which was only to the 1960s in the records, uh, it's been a realtor's office. It seems like it's, it's been a good location for realtors. However, um, the one variance request that we have before the zoning board, besides perhaps some bulk variance uh, requests, such as, I believe it's a setback from the, the driveway to the property line, um, but it's probably a waiver request. But the only variance request is to continue a real estate office. So real estate office is no longer a permitted use in the NC neighborhood commercial zone. So even though this has been here historically, uh, it's considered an existing non-conforming use. Um, the existing office occupies, currently occupies the two and a half stories. As I said, they don't need that much space anymore. Um, and then there's an addition in the proposed, in the top left here in the south east corner that will provide an elevator, stairway, a uh, parcel room for the tenants, and an entry lobby for the residential users. As I said, the dwelling units will occupy the second and third floor. Uh, they'll all be two bedrooms and a den. They'll all have laundry rooms and exterior balconies. Um, they're, all, they're all decent size. The first three are 1,100 square feet. The fourth one is larger. Uh, and that's 2,000 square feet. The, um, this is a 3D view looking uh, to the southwest. So you can see the par part of the garden apartment complex is retaining wall on the left. You see the cornerstone building on the right there. And then um, the proposal is to keep the, um, the existing building intact but move forward, uh, return the windows to the original one over one rather than the uh, current replacement windows which have a lot of grids in them, or muntins. Um, the addition on the left, which is the addition for the elevator and stairs, that's set back 32 feet from the facade of the, exist <coughs> me, of the existing building. Um, this is another 3D view looking from the other direction, looking uh, to the southeast. So this is um, approximately in front of the um, retail stores directly on the north side of Bellevue Avenue. This is the proposed north elevation, so we're going back to the oversized shingles, the one over one windows. This, this addition is set back 32 feet from this front facade. Um, the addition to the building is all set down lower than the, the height of the existing building. This is the east elevation um, up against the garden apartment complex. You can see the original building up front, the three-story addition here for the elevator and stairway, and then these are the, uh, the, the new two stories uh, to extend the, the residential uses above parking. And then to not make the building look like it's sitting up on stilts, uh, we're calling for these 
uh, lattice panels to bring the, uh, the building closer to the ground so the lattice panels connect the, the columns on the north side of the parking area and then we're repeating the lattice panels on all of the balconies on the exterior of the building. This is the rear elevation, again the, the oversized shingles. Um, and then this is the, again looking at the south, southeast view. But, um, the building is, is try to undulate a little bit to make it more interesting uh, as part of the addition so it's not just a straight, uh, sh straight box. Um, so I'll answer questions. Uh, thanks, Paul. You don't have any th those uh, pictures printed, do you, that we could maybe share? Yeah. Because it, sometimes it's difficult to see. Yeah. question. Um, the drawings that were submitted, did they reflect what we're seeing in the renderings or the renderings? But the drawings reflect what's shown in the renderings. However, the drawings that were filed, um, the driveway on the right um, was right up uh, one foot off of the property line, which would result in losing the shrubs uh, that you see in the front right there, separating this subject property's driveway from the Cornerstone's front parking lot. So the drawings have been modified uh, to adjust that driveway angle to save those existing shrubs. There's a row of um, um, dwarf, dwarf winged euonymus um, on the front of that property. So those will remain. So that was not shown on the site plan that was filed. Bless. 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 <laughs> Did everyone get a chance to look at the sub clause? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks again, Paul. Thanks for sharing these too, because th it's important to see. Um, and so, just to confirm what um, Tom said, the only change is the driveway? Correct. On the west on the, side? On the west side. Okay. Um, is that the that that finishes your testimony oh, then? Correct. Okay, thank you. So, um, commissioners, why don't we start with questions? Um, how about we start with you, Mike? Okay. Um, so, as Tom noted in his report, um, the bulk of the addition, it's quite substantial compared to the original uh, building. Um, I'm wondering if you could speak to that a little bit more. I mean, typically, right, we want to, uh, the addition is not supposed to overwhelm the original structure, right? right. So uh, can you speak to the bulk that we're looking at here, the size? Sure. As I stated, the addition is not as tall as the existing building. We lowered the height of the addition, and we also uh, step the addition in and out in several locations. Uh, uh, I believe in Tom's re original report, you suggested maybe the addition should have a different material or look differently than the original building. Um, in my time it just in my experience, putting additions on Victorian buildings is super hard to do um, okay. to make it work effectively. Um, <laughs> my comments are strictly from the township's um, design guidelines and the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, so my comment about the addition was its, its placement, its size, and the relationship to the existing house and visibility from Bellevue Avenue is really dramatically out of scale with the existing building. Um, could you tell us, um, maybe square footage-wise, what the original building was and the proposed addition? 
I'm sure that's on your drawings, right? It, it's on it's on the file drawings. I don't, I don't have that with me. Um, Tommy, can I borrow one set? Because even the length, right? I mean, it's I'm looking at it. It's four times essentially the length now, and that will be visible from the street as well as you're walking by. Right, you can see what would be visible from the street. Mm -hmm. Right, but when you're right, and as you're walking by on either side, you're gonna notice the depth of this, yeah. So it looks like 6,000 square feet, or no, that's required. Um, the proposed is 10,000, 834. Yeah, based, again, just adding the numbers on the zoning chart. Yep. Um, the existing building has a floor area of 4914, and then the proposed would have a floor area of 10,314. So that's a little over double the size of what it is now mm. in floor area. Do you have any other questions, Mike? I'm going to, uh, um, not right now, Kathleen. I'm gonna, uh, okay. Uh, Steve, do you have any questions? Um, the 20, it's, you're saying it's a 20 foot setback from the front? Correct. Is that all the way down the block? That's the requirement in the zone. The, the block varies. The there's, block varies. I mean, so there's, the streetscape on this side of Bellevue Avenue is, is extremely varied. Yeah. You know, you've got the cornerstone building, which was a gas station. This building, which presumably was a single family house in 1889. You've got the garden apartment complex built in 1939. And the interesting thing was looking up the records on the garden apartment complex, Francis Nelson was on the zoning board that approved that project with <laughs> no parking. Um, <laughs> which would never get approved now. <laughs> then you have a series of buildings to the east that presumably were one or two family dwellings that have all been modified to add many units to the back mm -hmm. of those, starting right. from right. the garden apartment complex down to the, the ball field across from right. the Buzz Aldrin yeah. School. So everything jogs in and out. Goes in um, and out. It just oh. seems to me that 20 feet's very shallow for Montclair, but Right, and that's the required front yard setback in the NC right. zone. Okay. That's what I'm You're concerned up. about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Question. When was this house built? 1889. Okay. Um, are you planning to move the, uh, the historic foundation with this house? Not, no. Okay. Foundation is a rubble. There's an old stone, red sandstone foundation. Under, that's under the original house. Um, do we think that the material on the outside of this house was this, the original was the shaker? Um, my, my guess shaker. is that based on Francis Nelson getting involved probably in the 1930s, the siding got changed to this because it's consistent with time. the Upper Montclair Women's Club. Okay. Um, not sure what it could have been. Tom, I mean, could have been it would have been no, some sort of novelty right, board siding yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 Closer to what do you show in the render? Um, 
so are you proposing to reclad this in this shake or the proposal is to reclad this in this oversized shake okay. but in certain areas to break up the facade we're showing horizontal siding okay. you know on the sides and uh, you weren't able to find any older photos that's the oldest photo okay i don't have any other questions um, I have a question. You mentioned about the density that was al allowed in, in, in this uh, district, which I think was six. S six I, maximum of six units. Six units. Do those units have uh, square footage rec uh, minimums? Or no. Oh, it's just six, so you could have six. Based on density, which is the units per, uh, per acre. Okay. okay. And so you um, said that the, uh, testified that the um, third, this will actually be three and a half stories then? No. It'll be three stories. Three stories. Okay, so what you're doing, is that a hip roof on the, the back of that? The, you're gonna keep the front gable and then go? Correct. Okay. And that, that hip roof will, or that roof will then become the third story? C correct. Where the attic is now. So, so it is a, a hip roof to be similar to the hip roof on the front of the building now. Okay. Right. And um, your proposal to move this to the front with a 20 foot setback, uh, when we look at the current photograph, that's a little bit behind. W where is that signpost? The signpost is. Um, In relation to where you plan to put the front, of I think I the front facade. Correct. Um, it's, it. Hard, hard to see on maybe on the piece of paper, but this is the signpost. Yeah, you have to take the, the Okay. The front yard signpost is, off is probably, the street, probably two feet off the front property line. Right along there. And mm -hmm. but then you said it's it would be twenty feet, 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 right? Twenty feet for the facade. The front of the building would be moved tw uh, to twenty feet from the property line. So it actually come forward to the be in front yeah. of this yeah. signpost. No. So the okay. signpost is only. One or two feet off the front property. Okay, line. but it'd be very close. Okay, it'll so be maybe at least eighteen feet behind that signpost. The oh. building would be twenty feet from the front property line, and the sign is two feet, and it'd be eighteen feet to the front facade. Okay. To the sign. I'm just trying to get a, an idea of how. Uh, um, and then in, in the planning report, it said that, um, which I, I thought was it reduced by the plan significantly improves the appearance of the property by limiting front yard parking, which everybody agrees, and reduces the amount of impervious coverage on the property. That's mm -hmm. because that that green lawn will then reduce the, everything now is impervious. Uh, right, so the majority of the property is currently paving. Um, okay. So by moving the house and creating that little bit of lawn, the 20 feet of landscaped area. Right. Correct. And then in the back, there's no, everything on your proposal, the back is all impervious, which it basically is now, correct? Except we're removing on the left or the east side, we're removing. Sorry. I need my clicker. Yeah, I know. Um, and we need a pointer. <laughs> yeah, I, sh I should have brought one. So along the back here, this is all paving. Um, so we're moving the paving to create this evergreen landscape strip there. Okay. Uh, this is all paving from this area to the front of the property. Everything in front of the property is paved. Um, and as I said, we, we adjusted this driveway recently when we saw that uh, we could save those, those euonymus. Um, uh, and you can see it pretty well in that rendering. And I think it would be pretty terrible if we didn't have okay. landscaping there. Uh, right okay, right all right. Up, right up in there. Thank you, Paul. I was just yeah. trying to get a handle on how, uh, 
uh, you know, how much impervious surface would remain and how much was going to go away. Um, those are uh, my questions. I'm sorry. And it, I believe this shows that existing sign right here. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. Oh, I have one question. Have you had success uh, or have you ever dealt with moving a clabbered house, a wooden house? Or these people you mentioned wolf manufacturing? Wolf, wolf, wolf house movers? Wolf house movers, right. That's, that's what they do. They move houses and buildings. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I so gathered. <laughs> Just from the name. But yeah, and for example, a wood frame building we, moved, we had moved was at 103 Park Street. It's um, about a block south of Montclair High School. There's a carriage house in the back. That was moved probably 40 feet. 35 years ago to uh, create a better parking layout. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if anybody knows Ted Friedman, the optometrist, mm -hmm. or, or Greg Heifler, who's a general practitioner. His office is back there. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions, commissioners? Or we'll, um, uh, Tom, I know you've gone through uh, probably most of your comments. Do you have any other? Um, no, most of my comments had to do with the, the massing and the scale and its relationship to the existing building. Um, but I, I did have a comment about moving historic buildings. So typically moving historic buildings diminishes the historical integrity by changing its relationship to the street, which we are doing, and the neighboring properties, which you know it does alter that. And by removing historic architectural fabric, and I was thinking of the actual foundation, right? That's mm -hmm not going to go with the house when it gets moved. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, so, commissioners, remember, this is a <coughs> referral to the uh, uh, zoning board. Um, so, uh, we're not uh, going to vote on, on approval for this. It's really for uh, the zoning board to make that decision. But I just would like to, uh, I think most of our concerns are really with the density of the, of the project and how it relates to this, um, I forget what, I, what it's called, but it, which has smaller uh, residential, it does have commercial buildings, but it has smaller residential buildings um, interspersed uh, with the, uh, yes, it's called the Upper Montclair Edge which the Land Use District and Unified Land Use and Circulation Plan. Plan states that this district should provide a small-scale, dense area where single-family homes, apartments, and professional office buildings mix to create an urban village where residents may commute primarily on transit by bicycle or foot. And um, the next concern is the uh, uh, appropriate uses, compact residential, professional office space, local retail, services and surface parking so that's just for us to consider when we um when we make our comments and how we uh and our referrals to the to the um zoning board so on that note steve um the only thing i'm concerned about is the only thing i'm concerned about is the massing and what it would look like but <clears throat> if it's if it falls between all the guidelines that we have to keep up with, and there's not much we can do about it. I mean, like the 20 foot setback, and I think the only thing they have problems with is the parking area and the size of the parking. That's not us. So. Mm. But how do you feel it fits within the, vil the you know, it's up in Montclair Village? That's the. It is so varied in that particular area. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's. There's this house, and then on the other side of the garden apartments, I think there's one or two that have been massively ex expanded like this. But those, I think, have larger front yards, don't they? Have the, their setback is the same as that garden apartment that's next to this proposed. Uh -huh. This is bringing it you know, very close, very to, the close street. to the street. This, this will be the close, much closer than the garden apartment or the, um, right. that right. store on the corner. Just a consideration. That's just a consideration of it, yeah. Okay, so massing density. Uh, John, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, it's, they're trying to develop this piece of property, I get it. Um, 
I, I don't have a problem with the massing per se, just how it's, it looks too much like the existing house. I'd rather see something com completely different so that you read the historic house. Now, you're making a lot of improvements to the facade and so on, but it looks like, it looks like the addition is moving forward to gobble the, fr the front, uh, front of this. So if there was some way to really make it recede and not try to be so much, I wouldn't have so much, uh, uh, you know, you're trying to develop it. So assuming you're trying to do this, that's, I don't know if I can argue with that per se. I like that, I mean, I, I walked around the house today or the, the office, real estate office today and you know, there's a lot of pavement and uh, I think moving it forward, it's too bad it has to move so far forward, mm -hmm. but to get the green space and get rid of what's there, it's an improvement. Um, yeah, I would just change, I would just, I have a problem with what the massing looks like, not so much the massing itself. So the, that, that was my second comment in my memo, that new additions would be regularly distinguishable from the, from the existing historic house. Uh, those, um, oh, I'm not a big fan of the, um, and this is another project you're coming to, it was St. Luke's, with getting the AC condensers in the front yard, uh, they just don't get hidden, I'm sorry. Uh, something's got to, maybe it's a higher, fence around that or something it just you, you see into it and um, you start seeing all the electrical boxes hooked up to the walls and all that kind of stuff so um, so I so, some improvement of, of the tra of the uh, AC condensers in front those are my comments thanks John I, I miss that is that correct Paul that the I didn't see that on on the plan Correct, there's AC condensers, compressed condensers, the front left uh, behind a fence, and then there's um, others on the front right. The, ah, to the okay. Right. So, I, I agree with John, I don't like to see okay. AC condensers either. Yeah, and that's another thing. It doesn't look like you have a lot of other places to put them, I get it, well, they could, they but they're just, unfor it's unfortunate there. Could sure. they be put below grade? We, we haven't done that so far. Um, so on the last the Derea Road application, they were proposing to put their mm -hmm. condensers below grade. That was the first time I ever saw it. Was in, on their in like a well? I said, like a yeah, like almost created uh, like an areaway. Uh, I said, wow. Uh, another comment, I would I would go back to my question about the foundation. Yeah. Maybe we can get a foundation that has maybe a, a split face concrete block, something that's more of a historic I, I period yep. than a stucco. Concrete. It looks like stucco concrete at the moment. So, just for the historic just yeah, just for this. They're leaving the old stone behind, which is sort of in, you know, what's happening with that old stone? By the way, Do, it just gets trucked away. I mean, that's you should go any, look at it. It's quite nice, actually. John, is there anybody like face reface the foundation with that old stone? Well, it's it's it's. You know, you can tell it's thick stone, so they'd have to take the old foundation. Maybe, yeah. you could, maybe they could do it in front, right. or have a right. little bit of it. Would somewhere, you be able to do that? Or yeah. call bring that. some of that That'd historic fabric back, you know, to the foundation. It, it is. It's 18 to, to 30 inches wide. That stone. Yeah, they're wow. they're. Wow. Okay, that's um, it. Uh, uh, Mike. Uh, I think my concerns are similar. Um, the uh, I do. Uh, have an issue with the massing it just um, does seem to overwhelm the original structure um, if we can uh, the, the foundation was also uh, after John brought it up uh, I agreed with him but uh, if we if you can move some of that original foundation and uh, somehow incorporate it into the to the move I think that would alleviate that concern I do like adding more green space back uh, it, to the front um, but yeah my my overall concern is just that it just does seem to overwhelm the the uh, the original building that's those are, those are my comments thank you um, yeah and I too have a the issue with uh, it being too uh, 
dense, too, not too, too, the, too much on, that, on a lot that um, really held a, a single family um, house. Uh, moving it forward and, and eliminating the parking lot is, is, I mean, eliminating the parking lot is, is a great idea. It's been a parking lot since I've been living in Upper Montclair. So that's a, a, a plus, but I think moving, you're moving it so far front that you're really destroying the, the, the uh, streetscape along that side because it'll be so far front. And yes, to your point, Paul, the other houses to the east of that large apartment building um, do have a lot of massing behind it, but th their front yards are also, I think, probably three times what you're proposed, or they're, they're much, they're bigger, at least twice the size. So I feel that there's too much um, mass, too, too, massing too much, and I would like to see the, uh, if you move it, um, it, not as far forward to, to create the, uh, the illusion that it, I mean, I think what you're trying to do is create the illusion that it's a single family, that you're, it's a single family house with just a bunch of apartments behind, because that's what the other, Houses on the block are. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I think the idea of the condensers um, in the front yard, moving them somehow either below grade. I think that's something that really you should uh, or we should put in our notes to the zoning board. And also the uh, existing stone on the foundation. If you could find a way to utilize that on what you're proposing for the foundation, uh, the foundation. The new foundation. So I think we've got all the. Those are four, right? Paul, do you know if there were any outbuildings on the on the site <laughs> originally? No. Like, like I said, the, old, the oldest thing we found was the um, the original um, real estate office photo. Um, and that was common in the 20s, when Nelson was working, the 20s to 30s, to tutorize these, these yeah. type houses. So um, there's a bunch of them. And, you know, there's some on, up on uh, Park Street as well. Right. T Tommy, you were at the Development Review Commission. I, you know, we had the building pushed back further, but remember Mr. Harrison felt strongly to move it as far up as possible to get further away from the houses, you know, the single-family houses in the rear. And, and and on Northview. Um, I recall there was a discussion on maintaining the shrubs. The, the evergreens, the evergreen yeah. The yeah. Uh, Paul, just so where would this, what you're just saying now, that the, moving the structure from the rear property line, move it forward? Um, Your new structure right. is how far off the rear property line is it? New structure is. Um, It's, um, it's toward 20 high feet high off the rear property, yeah, so which is the requirement. So there's a 20 foot front yard setback so requirement and a 20 side, foot yeah, rear yard setback requirement. Yeah, this so is which a, you're, this which, is which, right. which we're complying yeah. with. Right. Okay. Mm. But yet you want to, you want to offer larger, as much apartment square footage as po as you well, if, if, the building, if, if everyone feels the building's too big, we could speak. I could speak to the applicant, the owner, about reducing the size of the units. I mean, it seems like everyone's in agreement that massing might be a little too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, it, like I said, and I think everyone can agree, it's a great place to live, great place mm, for yeah. someone to live with the stores, the, the churches, the school, uh, bus and train. But you know, we could certainly look at reducing the massing um, and maybe also different materials mm. uh, on the new I part. think reducing the perception, I, th I think you can do something yeah. different there. To yeah. Okay. All right. Good comments. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Here. Um, oh, you want the picture? Oh. There's a bunch of pictures here. Yeah. Oh, can I get the back? Okay, so here's I think they're all there. Um. Okay, then. Next up is uh, a referral to, again, to the Zoning Board, application 2809, 
107 South Mountain Avenue. This is in addition to a single family dwelling. Um, do you have do you have any uh, you don't have any images to we had some we have plan and photos that we can pull up. Okay. Um, they didn't they didn't you guys don't okay. It's not, it's not a requirement. I just, oh. it's easier to, to see rather than us unfolding the, these papers up here. Okay, okay. Uh, we have the PDFs. Tell me if you can hold it up. And you can scroll through it as you, as you want to. Yeah, no problem. But after our first meeting, Kathleen, we had submitted the photos you had requested for the door and the front. Uh huh. How the house looks. So that we have. You have additional. Okay, you great. Have to them in, by the way. Yes. Before it's new to me. Oh, just sit know. down. Please. Sit down and be comfortable. That's all. <laughs> I didn't know if you needed a presentation. No, you don't need it. You, you made a pre. You, we have the, your drawings. We have everything. We just we're we just know, asking like you to describe. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay. We'll and I have chronic Lyme disease, so I'm like tanking right now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, we have to take a break because we don't have uh, one of our. Just went to the restaurant. So oh, we we do can pause. I'll tell you a joke. No. <laughs> Humor is a how I get away, I get along the day. Um, okay. Steve is back. Steve is back. Um, so we this uh, as I uh, announced okay. before, this is application 2809, 107 South Mountain Avenue. Uh, this is a recommendation also for the planning board thank you so our comments will be um, sent to the to the planning board we are not here to give you approval tonight that the zoning board rather that uh, that's um, uh, subject to the zoning board approval uh, this property is located in the first residential historic district has listed on the National Register and is referred to us for comment um, the applicant and their architect uh, met with the design review committee of the HPC on June 2nd, 2022. Um, the commissioner's comments were generally favorable with recommendations about window design for the sunroom. And as I remember, there were a few other comments as well. Um, so uh, we, the subject property is an interior lot on the east side of South Mountain Avenue. It is frontage along South Mountain Avenue, and it is developed with a two and a half story single family dwelling and detached garage to the rear. The driveway runs along the north side of the property adjacent to Dykes Lane, which is a public pathway connecting South Mountain Avenue to Clinton Avenue to the east. Surrounding uses include single family dwellings on both South Mountain Avenue and um, Clinton Avenue. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's located in the first residential historic district and is a three bay wide, two and a half story building, circa 1900, colonial revival style, farmhouse facing west, northwest towards South Mountain Avenue. Um, 107 South Mountain Avenue is a contributing resource in the first residential historic district. And uh, we've been provided with plans for the addition that 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 um, you are proposing, and uh, before we look at that, we're, you'll be sworn in, Mr. Uh, <laughs> our attorney. What did, why is Paul not speaking? <laughs> so you have to give your name and. My name is Shoba. I'm Gary Basher. And we live at 107 <laughs> South Mountain. Can you raise your right <laughs> hand? Do you swear that the testimony that you're going to give this evening regarding your application will be the truth? Yes. yes. Thank oh, you. I'm very honest anyway. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, we have, those are the new pictures that you have up. Do you have a, a proposal for the addition? The plans are up there. Yeah, if you wanna so Gary, you will do that? And there's a mic there too if you want to speak. So the addition is behind the bee. We have, uh, as per American tree. Wait, is your, is your mic on? It yes, is, the I green agree. light is on. Okay. I am not close to it, um, so that's, um, that's the problem. I do, by the way, have a very soft voice, so if you can't hear me, 
Then you just tell me. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how we make it work. I have a very loud noise, but. So um, this is a th this right here is our current house as it stands right now. Just to give a little background on what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing, is um, my wife has chronic Lyme disease. Our there's no living space on the first floor. The living space on the second floor is very noisy because it's the original window, single pane. It's very difficult. She can't she can't sleep with that noise. So we live on the third floor, and she is not able to keep climbing those steps. So we're looking to put an addition on the first floor so that she has the ability to not have to climb steps and we can be there. The reality is if we're, we can't do that, then we we'll probably will have to move to another location just to support this. And, and on a side note, my daughter just tested for Lyme disease, so we're now treating her as well. And uh, we, uh, this is like back, uh, this is like a true story. Um, Abigail is very attached to the home, so we can't uproot her. So that's why we started this process. Okay, I can't climb the stairs. How can we make it work? Because it's not working. We're sleeping in living room. And the days, the flares up, flare ups are almost like every week. So um, between doctor visits and this, it just not, tippy top floor is like extremely useless. Middle floor room has, um, I mean, the floor has uh, use, but not for sleeping. So we looked at homes for two and a half years when COVID was happening, and that's when we started designing this process. And also the garden and the trees are very important to us because we are in the habitat of monarchs and uh, bee and hummingbird. So we couldn't like really shuffle it and just add an addition to the front and then call it a day. That's why it took us this long. It took us like almost two years. And uh, we looked at homes. Uh, we have a ranch in our uh, site. And if, depending on how the hearings go this month and the next month, we will make a decision only because Abigail's very, very attached now because she was born in this house. Hmm. So the, um, the only other thing I would suggest, if you can hear me, is that we are very big gardeners. So we were in the Van Bleck uh, garden, Rock the Roses garden. We, we do, uh, she is very attached to all the plants. She actually talks <laughs> to them. So what you'll notice on our plan right here is right here is a big. Um, Be, uh, it's a southern magnolia. Southern it's almost magnolia uh, tree right here. 60 years old. And, and so that's, why, that's the reason why we couldn't add to the front because it will hurt the roots of the copper beech tree. We have, I think, the oldest and the largest copper beech tree of Montclair. Mm. So if you look you, from the front, you can't see the addition at all. And um, when the tree shed, uh, and the tree sheds the leaves, even still, like mag magnolia is evergreen, so it you won't see um, because we have laurels first by the fence, and then behind it is southern magnolia. Yeah. So that was the key from from the street. You don't see the addition because the evergreens cover it. And and so just imagine the, cop the copper beech tree is covering everything anyways, and then we have the magnolia tree right here. And that magnolia tree would also cover the addition on top of that. Um, we, we put the addition on with a very low profile because we would wanted it to be um, not visible as well. Um, and on top of that, from a noise perspective, because of the noise level, it would help because it sits lower grade and all that noise she wouldn't be able to hear. So this would be the addition that we would be looking at. Um, so basically, we wanted to make it like one floor living because then we don't need the uh, top floor at all. Right. And if we do this addition, that's why it is large because it has all the aspects we need. Because um, we are gardeners, so the sunroom helps us because I bring all the jasmine. My jasmines bloom like tw 12 months. So it's like very refreshing when jasmines are blooming in December. And that only happens because I put them in my laundry room and then there's no place to walk around. And um, we spoke, Kathleen, the reason it is all glass is because I'm legally blind, so I need light. Even if you have like white light, uh, after like two, three hours, uh, I won't be able to see. So natural light, uh, element of indoor, outdoor, and just close on one, one floor was our goal. Do you have a render, that's the front view. Do you have a rendering of the side? That's yeah. the side. That's Bob Chapman's side, yeah. And if you look at right here, uh, this is our second floor. So in order to not block that level, we, we made sure that we had a very low roof so that we had a complete view from there. 
and it also would not um, hinder our neighbor from Bob's side, which we've had conversations with already, um, which he's perfectly fine with. So our whole goal here is to, to be less invasive on everything else. Um, you know, I've heard tonight about, you know, if we're putting addition on a historical house to make it feel vintage, we try to do that, but we also try to keep it low profile where you would not even notice it's even there. From like street, Kathleen from street level, yeah. And also Kathleen, um, I spoke to the architect, they, they said, uh, do you want us to be there? I was like, I don't know what you're gonna say, I can say, because we already spoke to you guys and we got all your points. They said that they changed the windows you had requested. Remember you had asked uh, the front of the windows to be more in alignment with the main house windows. Mm -hmm. So they, they said that they did that, but I don't know if, they yeah, they did it. Right here, so yeah. the um, putting in here to make the characteristic of the window very similar to what they were before. So this is the front. Could yep. you just forward forward again to the to the uh, south facade? That's the south. Yep. Well, I just want to get an idea of what the the entire thing. This is the from the north. This is the driveway side. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's the back. That's correct. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's back. Okay. And. And then it's two stories in here. Two stories here? This would no, be, the, um, the bottom would be an unfinished space. It's a walkout space, like our uh, storage is, uh, which is basement. It's a walkout basement, but it is unfinished. So we don't, I mean, it's just a covered space so, so that plants and uh, stuff can be housed. So it will not be anything. But the house is banked into the, to the, uh, it, it's a banked house into uh, uh, to South Mountain Avenue. In other words, that bottom floor is right. It's yeah, it goes down on the right. Slope. It is sloped. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just so you come down, and then there's a utility room. It under under the glass room would be utilities, and then you step out. Okay. Like you come down, and then it's a walkout. Okay. And, and if All you right. look at the front, um, you'll notice that. How it goes down. That's the side. Yeah. yeah. There's only a very short distance from that where the yes. space is, and then when you go to the back, you'll notice that it really. Okay. I just wanted the rest of the commissioners because I had a hard time understanding. Right. Okay. And so you really, I mean, from a visibility standpoint, it's not going to be noticeable for anybody. Um, but Tom wanted to talk about the front facade, so we can go back because that's what we have not spoken at all, and if we, I mean, it's. We just remove all the shoes because of uh, infection issues for us. That's why. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. So we remove shoes outside in the oh. vestibule. Mm -hmm. So we thought if we come out to where the steps are, then it will have enough room because usually when it is snowing or raining, one person is waiting outside when the uh, one person is taking shoes off. So it's like very small. So mm -hmm. we wanted to cover it where the pillars come or the I think the first step. I don't know how far we are coming. It's in the plants. Right, right so I, I, we wanted to cover this so that we get a bigger area to... to oh, so you're planning to enclose it. Okay. Yeah, but okay. uh, I enclose think the best of on, the, on our meeting, Kathleen, we, uh, I, that's what my impression was also, that we are just closing where the pillars are coming. But I think it is also going a foot or two foot towards the left-hand side window. And you're moving the window too, right? That's a powder room. Like it, powder room window, it stays though. Oh, he closed it. There's no window on the right side, Tom? Right at here. the front yeah. entrance? He, he's, he's absolutely right. So what we're looking at right here is this is the existing structure right here. And then what this would be is the enclosure. Um, so basically we're- We are closing the powder room window. Yeah. This is a this this is a uh, this is a window for a little powder room that's literally two foot. The, 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 the door, the front door. The window is at this side of the door. Oh yes, right. No, go go there. Go uh, show the front picture. No, right here. See right here. Are are you so that vestibule becomes a new door with side lights. And yes. then you have the old door. Remember we talked yes, about the so old door. 
I am sourcing the door. I am in conversation with someone upstate New York. They house uh, vintage doors. So I send them photo of our Dutch door, which mm -hmm. I showed you guys over the phone. And um, they have something similar. So we, what we will do is we will put our original Dutch door as the main door. Mm. And then the vintage door will be inside. So this, this door right here is what, what we're referring to. This is one of the original doors. It's the coolest door. It's actually one of the reasons why I like the house. That's yeah, but we showed Kathleen and uh, Steve on the phone call. I'm not sure if everybody else <laughs> has seen it, but from Tom's standpoint as well, it's a, it's a very thick... Um, a it's three-inch thick. ...with glass, and it's a very... Uh, it's, it's a really cool Dutch door that you can't probably find anywhere else. So Ta right Tommy now, that's here. And do you have, have the photo? the regular the door here. The photo of the door we can show. No, no, the photo... I had taken the door photo, Gary, and then I had submitted. Right. There. That's the door. Oh. That's so and, and that's, a d that, that's a Dutch door. That's a Dutch door. Okay. And the and guy said. Multi panes? Yeah, it, it's beveled, too. It, the glass is beveled. Ooh. So th the guy said uh, he can get something like that. So I told him, OK, then we will put this, our original door, which is which was the original door before the people put the um, cover. Uh, the red door right we have is a metal door right now. Before that door was there, it, there was a screen in place of that door, and that was the main door. And, and Tom, just so you see, here's the, the door as it stands. There are the two uh, sides on the top. Side lights, right. Yeah. But uh, from your plan, it looks like you're removing the one on the right. Uh, I think both are still on, if I, if I looked at the plans here. You have one here, and you have one here. No, but I'm saying in the original location, right? right there. Yeah, right there. The one on the right is this one is being this is a side light, this right? One, right here. So yeah. So, but the whole thing will be closed. So um, yeah. So the whole thing will be closed, and we need a bench on that side. So. If does it matter? I'm um, just for a knowledge uh, purpose. Does it matter if the sky, uh, if the side lights are closed after the door, Tom? Does it matter? Um, no, hi for historic <laughs> purposes. I don't know. I'm like, I'm, uh, this is my first meeting. I don't know much. Right. <laughs> it would be nice if we could leave some sort of evidence that it, it was a window. If we could leave the trim and infill the opening to be solid. So, so why don't we, are, are you finished with your testimony then in terms of what you're planning to do? Okay, and I think we all have a, an idea of the uh, proposal and how it sits. Thank you for going through that. So Thank if you. that concludes your testimony, we'll open it up for questions now. So Steve? Um, it seems like you had, from your previous testimony, you really haven't done that much on the facade on the back. Maybe rhythm of windows or something like that, but that's it. Right. Right. So okay. this is about the same as we saw before. Is this new business? I didn't see this before. No, we, it, we, we met the design review committee met with them prior to them coming here. Oh, so, so that we could offer before. so we could offer suggestions, yes. So um, right. Okay. Um, so you're seeing it new. So um, okay. Questions from John, Michael, and Tom. Um, Thank you. I like How do you come into your house on a daily basis? Do you front door and kitchen come, door. You come in the front door? Or front door and the back door. And the back door. So if we pull the car in the back, like in a day, I have to, if uh, it all depends on Abigail's schedule. So she sings opera professionally, so I go in and out. So if I have to go out in an hour, I park the car right by the little curve, which goes um, by the red maple. If we are parking for the evening, then we come from the kitchen from the back, because then I pull the car all the way to the garage. And it's, it's probably uh, just maybe 60% of it is from the back, and 40% is it from the front. To the front, okay. Um. Uh, do you do, uh, you, do you need a front yard variance? No. 
No, uh, that's what we, right, Tommy? We only need side yard variance. Yes, the, the plans show that there is a front yard setback needed, but the calculation was incorrect. Um, actually, yeah. not in their favor. Because um, they, they use their own setback as part of the average, which they're not supposed to, and so that actually increased the average setback, and so they're actually, they're complying. They so they are, don't need they a front yard are, setback. They are, they are complying. Yes. Now, okay, we did the existing position of the new addition. Right, it was, they thought, the architect had a thought that there needed to be a front yard setback variance for the new, for the enclosed um, portico, but there there isn't a variance needed for it. It's compliant. Um, there, there's a, a in the front uh, new entry. I see a little landing outside the front door, and a couple steps down. Uh, you're going to need a railing there um, somewhere along the line. So I don't see any. You know, it'd be nice to know what that would be at some point. I would imagine it's an iron railing or something. That's uh, fine. I like iron. So what I plan to do, to when once the addition is done, I plan to do the iron, iron trellis so that I can have climbing roses on it. So the iron railing will look very pretty. That's a good point, John. Thank you. Questions, questions. Um, right here. I don't have any other questions. I have a question. I don't see it on the plans. The width of the existing house, the addition, is it this? Is it the same in feet? And is it what is the? Sixty feet. It's sixty feet. Corner to corner. But then, like, that's your question, right? Corner to new addition to corner of the original house, is sixty. No, feet. the original house compared to the addition. What's it, which? It's bigger. It looks as though they're the same or. I can, the same. Oh, I, I don't even, I don't see any numbers. So 14, this and this, this width and this width. So it's, it's 14. Uh, just the, the, the size of the addition. It is total size, total square feet, Kathleen? Or the Not the square, the, just the, the 30 feet. 30 feet, okay, we just found, we found it. <laughs> it's about the same width. I'm, I was curious as to the existing house, what the width, what the same width was. Yeah, and you've heard what we've been talking tonight, that um, additions should be diminutive to the, to the um, existing building. Yeah, so that, that was the reason we put it so much in the back, because if the tree was removed and we did it in the, um, front like added to it then it would have been narrower and smaller yes so so that was the point when we met that um, it's actually the center part sets back how many feet enough for that magnolia tree to go to, to fill in That's correct. so the drip line of the tree uh, because I called the tree experts and then they marked with the spray paint that how far we can go. That's how I started the design process. And mm -hmm. then we put the tapes and ribbons. So it's actually four feet from the drip line. Okay. Of the tree. Okay. And then when we had spoken, uh, when we had talked with the, uh, uh, previously last month, mm. we, ta we talked about the skylights too. Yes. About change. You said it will be too bright. Right. I said I need it. Because you have two different skylight, correct? No, they're all same. Well, what, what is oh, on top of the... Above the closet, yes, yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. So above the closet, there are two skylights, and we had talked about it to see if we can use the same skylight what we have on the solarium. Right. We right. can do that. No worry, that's Okay, fine. and that's a metal Correct. sort of tenement skylight, right? He, he writes here because... Um, um, we took your comment, Kathleen, and I said, uh, what can we do? Can we have blinds in the skylight? He said, there, there are skylights which are covered. Right. So we will have that option. Mm -hmm. But we will make it, like, if your suggestion is to have the same skylight over the closet, we can do that. No worries. So I have a comment about that note that's on the elevations. It says, new metal yeah. roofing to match. See, I thought that was a skylight. To perfectly match existing. So... That's, oh. a, that's a roof accent piece. That's not a skylight. The thing that sticks up. But it says to perfectly match existing. So oh. where is there existing? 
metal. We don't. We don't. No, no, no. Metal. That's an error. All right. No, and it him doesn't. Saying, the architect saying perfectly all over the drawings. Yeah, yeah but uh, I'm not sure no, we should be using no, that that's word. an error. He's allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> all right. So can I go back to my question? I what we're looking at. I thought that was a skylight. I thought that was a metal rib skylight. What you're saying is that's a metal roof, new metal roofing. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, the, the, uh, wait, no, no. Is, wait, is it a roof or is it a skylight? Which which one is it? There are both. There is a roof and skylight, both. So if you go on the this side. right, the skylights are flat, right, and the, the correct. The roof is on the bedroom is a, side. Yes. So is a metal the roof. solarium okay. is flat with skylight, and uh, over the bedroom you see the roof. But if you look at from front, it looks like that skylight has roof no the little hut shape is over mm -hmm. the bedroom so there's two skylights on uh, one skylight in front of another not side by side the roof does Gary, can you go on this so yes Tom there are so there are if you look yes six seven eight nine skylights nine skylights Three, three first on the solarium, uh, the breezeway, and then six on the uh, solarium side. So six, nine, ten, eleven. So in here there's no skylights? It's just a roof. Like it's just a roof. It's just a metal roof. So here is the walkway that comes from the existing house over to here. And on this walkway there would be actually lighting or skylights here. And, and this right here is where our existing magnolia is, and this is like a solarium room. So these skylights would be for the solarium room that existed. And only these two skylights are to give light so that you can see in the closet. No, Kathleen. Yes, so to your point, there is no, so the solarium has flat roof and the back deck has flat ro roof. Only roof is over the bedroom, bathroom, and closet. That's it. And it's it's that metal pinched roof, like which most people are doing. And again, our, our goal here is that we don't, we had originally, they originally sketched a lot of peaks. So we just got rid of the peaks. would actually make it extremely, um, cut off the visibility from the upstairs of the house. And at the same time, it also made it so that you could. From the street, you started outside. seeing peaks. I was like, no peaks. So this way, we basically limit, because it's on a grade, <laughs> And it's coming down. <laughs> you limit the view and the visibility, and it gives us, you know, a complete. Because we want to see our garden, we want to see the trees, um, and so we, we we kept everything at a very low profile. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, and we want to you know when we met that we're concerned with what the uh, what we see from the public right away, the street and the and the, and the Correct. So, so, uh, okay. So you want me to show you a photo? Like, what should I do? Okay. <laughs> um. So uh, this might be more for uh, discussion. Uh, for discussion, I'm thinking, but. Uh, I, I, all right, no, I, I probably should ask uh, the applicants first. So I, I, I do see, the, you know, the tree does obstruct your view, um, but I still, you know, do see, I can see the fence very clearly from Google Maps. I can, you know, kind of see through from certain areas and driving by. So it's not like it's going to be completely hidden. Um, uh, I mean, this may be a little out of left field, but, I mean, wouldn't it make sense if this were done in the back uh, rather than on the side of the house? So one of the things, Mike, that we have a problem with is our lot size. Yeah, is on an but I'm looking at the like survey, this. right? And it looks like there's room back there. Am I? It, it so comes in. The further back you go, our lot goes like this. So the reason we had to step the addition in is so that we can get a, a it to fit. If we go back further, we would actually end up having to put it behind the house. Correct. So go that way. But wouldn't it make sense to go behind the house? I mean, is there mm. any reason? No, to, because no? it that? limits the light of the living room and the kitchen. Because initial plan, uh, we had added a little square, and it really did not look very well. And it did, I'm a Reiki master, so 
it it ha it doesn't flow very well. It's like so easy to just plop another two squares behind the house, but then our our mature perennial garden will have to be uprooted because there are three three habitats I will have to disturb. Uh, well, I mean, I, I I understand. I'm just I mean, but uh, so the issue is that the garden would be uprooted and that the light to the kitchen would be living room the would living be. room would be el would be eliminated yeah Li uh, living room has original bay windows and that will be blocked if oh. we came another six feet in original bay windows would have to be removed correct Okay. They're original 1884's window, and that's why I don't replace them because Gar that's like our main argument when okay. builds are high. Uh, he wants to replace the windows, and I don't. <laughs> so, so <laughs> we try to keep it as like old as possible. Uh, okay, I have another. So, do you have a more detailed view of what you're proposing for the vestibule, the entryway, or it's, uh, what? What you've shown on on this, I agree. Some additional track. renderings would be helpful. Yeah. I asked them, and they said no. The plans show it all. Um, I said, can you just render like like three D? This also, anyway. Well, I digress. So from front, Kathleen, there, there, are like, see. Let me show you. Something. Okay. This is the rendering that they put together, um, having a door. But that will that will now become the original door, the Dutch door, Correct. with the uh, multi-pane. Correct. So that's like the, in this particular door is um, resourced. So if we don't find the door matching the Dutch door, Dutch door will come out. Right. And then what flanks either side of that door? Is it a side light? Or is it just a what? this right here? Right there. What's that? That's glass. a that's a side light. Yeah. That'll be glass. Yes. Okay. It is similar to what we had, but uh, originally we had like little thing here, a raised curtain situation, and the side the side lights are higher. But we did floor two when our door left. And then there's gonna when you there'll be a bench on the left side, and there'll be no windows on the side. Correct. Correct. And but you are coming out with. Okay, and what what is the current um, portico now? Is it brick? It's a blue stone. It's like and the stone. stairs that go up? They are all They're like cement. One, one They're cement. Hmm? They're cement. Mm -hmm. It's a blue stone. This this right here is cement, and this is cement as well. The actual sidewalk is blue stone. Okay. So this. Uh, forms a P from front, it looks like uh, it's like straight, when front rendering shows, but it, it forms around and it's like curved, and um, these are cellar windows, so by for your comment, we have laurels built by the fence, so each year, laurels grow like almost 18 inches, so uh, last year, I did not change, last, last year we trimmed them to like literally two feet, that's why we see only this one. Mm -hmm. Those laurels are like the, the pole position. Okay. So those laurels actually go 20 feet high. So once they are, see, this, these are laurels. So and and what height are they currently, you said? Mm -hmm. They're, what, they what are currently. I think they're probably around five. Five. <laughs> the one in the back. But these are, because we cut them short below the fence, but now we are letting it grow knowing that we're going to do that addition, so we don't want to see any uh, any construction, like new addition, because uh, laurels don't shed their leaves, so they'll be green all year round. You can see them, you can see the, in figure seven in the staff court, if you have that, yeah. you can see the fence and the plain things there a little bit better. What's up there? Okay, um, you, or are there, I think we've exhausted questions now. Um, Tom, do you have, uh, Your mic is yeah, oh, sorry, oh, Mike. No, I'm, I'm okay. Oh, I see. And this is a better picture of the vestibule. Oh, 
You're right. <laughs> Sorry. Is um, your microphone on? Tom? It is. All right. My, my two comments I had about, about this project were um, to meet the Secretary of Interior standards, a new addition must be compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the building to which it's attached or its particular neighborhood or district, an addition that bears no relationship to the proportions and massing of the historic building usually compromises the historic character as well. The proposed addition's placement size in relationship to the existing house and visibility from the public right of way dramatically, is dramatically out of scale. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm understanding a little bit more about what your project is, so I'm not sure I, I agree with my statement about dramatically <laughs> out of scale, but um, maybe, um, you know, the, the massing um, and, and, and scale might be, uh, need some work. But, um, the proposed addition seems to diminish the character of, of the existing building. Um, my second comment, new additions should be readily distinguishable from the existing historic house and should be harmonious with the existing and scale proportion of materials and color, which is pretty similar to what I stated in the first uh, comment. And such additions should be in, in conspicu inconspicuous as possible from the public view. Um, under the Secretary of Interior Standards, we are not to look at landscaping. Mm. Um, landscaping should be removed from our um, judgment of the of the proposed addition because landscaping changes all the changes time. Some, a new person a new owner could come in and rip everything out um, does that include trees Kathleen they won't cut the trees, trees as well. it includes trees all, right. oh, okay. all landscaping but um, uh, Montclair has a rule you can't take down a tree unless no, it um, is um, yeah uh, but it does change uh, just as a general rule we're, we're not supposed to, we're, we should be looking through the landscape. Oh, oh the, I got it, I got it. At the addition. Thank you, Tom. So uh, we'll be up for discussion. Steve. Oh, sorry. Well, I mean, since we talk about Put the, land, like, the landscaping, pay no attention to it. That's, I mean, their whole designs mm. is about the landscaping. <clears throat> and so, um, I mean, I, I don't have any problems with it as as, as designed. Um, it's just an addition to the house, and it happens to be very subservient to it because it's so much shorter. And I don't have any problems with it. Okay, um, John. Um, I think the biggest problem I have is with the new front portico or front entry. I just don't think it, uh, I, I would not tear down the existing, I would leave it. If you need a closet, make the powder room a little smaller, move the toilet. And, I mean, there's room there to grab a little space if you really, I, I really have a problem with the, that entry. The addition to the right, I went by the house today, you're never going to see it. I realize there's a lot left. I mean, it's really socked in so you don't see it. Um, in a way, it does do what we are suggesting, which is it's different than the rest of the house. It's, it sets itself as, apart from it. There's no mistaking that it's one thing. Maybe the siding should not match the existing house. Well, um, how about the stepping of the foundation, right? Maybe if you yeah, breaking the it apart. Yeah, breaking that change apart. Change the material of the foundation, not step the foundation. Exactly. Um, um, and the window topology seems to be all over the place. Mm. Um, if we could just pick, right, there's, so it looks like there's some transoms in some of the windows and are not these, in others. Are these real flat wind uh, skylights? Are they, yes. are they're, they're flat, flat? Okay. So can I ask you a question, John? Mm -hmm. Would you be to Would you be okay if I just brought the whole door the way it is out? where the portico is, because by uh, setback, we are okay, right, uh, I, I understand. I'm just looking at it from a historic point of view. I don't, oh. you, you no longer have a covered entry. You have a door right at that, that uh, platform uh, that, 
to me it's not right. it's not quite it doesn't give the house the depth mm. that it had before it's just it's the one place it's the one thing we do see that isn't blocked by the landscape so <laughs> you know uh, the, so no <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> then we can keep it <laughs> i just want a bedroom <laughs> so that i can sleep in a bedroom not on sofa uh, can can i say one thing on certainly on the on the portico itself Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned about the, the the little half bath. The little half bath is just, you can't hardly even walk in it as it is today. It's, it's a miracle it's how we use it. It's literally this wide and there's no... It looks to like to me on plan that you come in the door yes. and you have about four feet. I know it's narrow, yes. but there's yes. a distance until you get to the sink and beyond that's the toilet. Cur no, if first is the toilet, then the sink. So okay, to okay. To Someone who's taller, they have to go to the middle floor. Well, maybe there's I, something you can do in... I, I got it, but I could see moving the sink <laughs> to a different location. I could see the door swing. I mean, you could solve it there if you really wanted to. Yes. I'm not convinced that it can't work. It can't, there you can't are always get solutions a closet to a there. You won't get a bench in a closet, but I could see how you could get a closet. I'm not trying to design it for you. Step no, back. I just don't right. like the front entry condition, so... I really don't think you can cancel the front. <laughs> I just need a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I cancel the front. Are we it's negotiating <laughs> front versus <laughs> bedroom versus? <laughs> Please, I just need a bedroom. I it's got really it. stressful I to got move. It. Yeah. Okay, Mike. that's it. Mike. Yeah, I don't know if I have any additional useful comments um, <laughs> for the applicants. Uh, uh, I am glad that the landscaping is there. I know that we're not supposed to consider it, but I think that that's. Um, probably helpful to the cause. I, I think the idea of unif making the uniform, uh, the windows more uniform, uh, I thought was a great suggestion by Tom. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any additional uh, comments. So Tom, may I ask you a question? Sure. What, uh, like, how do they become uniform? Like same kind? Like what, do, what is not uniform? Yeah, if you just look at the front elevation, right? There, there it looks like there's three sure. different types of windows. Okay. They're all same. Uh, Tim said that they're all same. We had, when we met Tom, we su had suggested the, the smaller mullions around uh, the windows to make it compatible, to, to right. try you, to tie you, it in with the. I'd be okay with any one of those windows, but to, you know, pick one. Um, yeah. Oh, so he forgot to add those small ones on the breezeway. Uh, yeah, we right. had, we had. Yes. Talked about that. Yes. <laughs> That's why I yes, thought. Yes. And, uh, I, I, if you look f at the foundation, like from the water table down, it matches the existing house exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, it's got that little sweep to the the water the water table yep, that yep, matches, yep. and the stone matches. Right. Uh, I think you should get rid of that. Um, oh, we added the stone because uh, Kathleen said it would be better, right, Kathleen, that we match the stone foundation to the new. Construction. But we wanted to change to make it a little. That's fine. I don't like them anyway. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> it would be cheaper, right? To just yes. Make it a, yeah. Yes, um, yes. 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 I think you should carry the foundation. Of, uh, it could be all stucco. The height of Tom, the agreed. Should remain next, the same. Next. The, next topic, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we will make the window same. Which which part do you want the small ones on top? That's. Uh, I would be okay with anyone. Right, Kathleen. You want it. You want I it thought like they, but d d d yeah, to go all the way the top and the and the sides too. So what I uh, have I is add million. What are they called, Gary? Those small mountains. little tiny squares. Uh, they will go all the way. Yeah. Maybe okay. the heads of the window should align with the existing. They got but it. The, the that was the other thing we talked about. That that did. line if should the be. Head, the heads aligned, but maybe the sill could be. Like the new ones, and th maybe the sill doesn't have to match the existing, so they could be taller. Okay. But as long so as the heads aligned, I think that might help. So that's bring the top of the windows down. down? Bit, yeah, just slightly. Yeah. Right. Just that's how I had it, and then they changed it. But d that's what we got it. We had talked. You about didn't change it, like ta uh, right. Uh, Ron, Ron so the it. line, the wi line of windows. Right. Right. So bring this line down so that this matches. Mm -hmm. You could do that. To this window right. Type, right. Got it. That's doable. I just need an electrical stop here. 
Okay. And what what is the siding material on the existing? I don't know what that was going to be. The siding material is planned to be the same as it is on the house today. So, yeah, maybe it should be something different. Okay. What? Cheaper? Cheaper <laughs> options? <laughs> Please tell not me what. <laughs> But Tom, there's not much. Yeah, I, Fred, know. there's not much. You, aside from the from the west elevation, you really don't have much siding there. It's it's more. It's yeah. mostly glass. Well, it's I was looking at the side elevation. Oh, um, but oh, towards Bob's side, you will have green giants there. You won't see anything. Yeah. Okay. Like. But you know, this is for your architect to figure out. Yeah. So, if I understand, Tom, is that. Basically, we should try to distinguish it more than we are with yeah. the yes. Yep. yes. Yes. Great. That we will do. So we are in uh, negotiation, right, John? So front we keep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's just let's just recap here. Um, you want me to? I have a, a list. You want me to go through it? Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're so good, Tom. <laughs> You're so good. So impressed. She's very complimentary. Um, to you. <laughs> The, so th these are comments and, uh, and recommendations. Um, the addition is subservient in scale, um, but should be differentiated more in materials. For instance, the foundation material and the materials of the walls should be differentiated. The windows should be more uniform in design, so the mullions will be carried across to the breezeway. Um, the, the window headers will be brought down to match the height of the existing windows, and the, and the, the sill can be brought down. Um, the sill should, still, still should remain probably where it is. I think that's probably fine. Okay. So the window will get a little shorter. And did we say the stucco should be brought throughout the whole foundation? Well, right now it's stone on the main house. It could be another material, I don't we're, think. Yeah. You think it's and we're okay. saying okay. just yeah. differentiate, use a different oh, material. Okay. And then also just do away with with the front portico enclosure and and keep the front covered porch as is but and if maybe you use the interior space right. to accommodate a mudroom yep doable i just need a bedroom okay <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. so are we in agreement then that the width of the addition which is the same as the width of the house can be can remain I mean, is it mm -hmm. differentiated enough it's so much far back, Kathleen. Yeah. yeah, no, I just want to make, because okay. of the massing. Okay, okay, yeah. and, and what we talked about before, I think pushing that center part back yeah. to accommodate the tree okay. um, does... It, it forms creates, a T. Right, no, and it creates what we what you what could look at as a hyphen, really. Um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to the new addition. Uh, uh, so... Um, so I think we've covered everything, right? The best of you and it. Okay. So you know the previous architect he was brilliant. He brought in like you know the trees, how it's going to look. Like it was like fancy, very fancy. We should have had our trees so that you wouldn't see anything. Yeah. No, we have to look over. Yeah. <laughs> he is so smart. All right. Oh it's God, a, it's an elevation. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much and good thank luck. You. Thank, thank you. you guys and here, much. take. Thank uh, you. I'd love to see the front, the this door though on the front. I think that Come would be. Over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll stop by. Come over. So don't see it. Can you keep it? <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Next up. Okay, next up we have uh, another referral to the Zoning Board, application 2814, 73 South Fullerton Avenue, also known as St. Luke's Episcopal Church. This is uh, an existing 1888 Gothic Revival, Romanesque Revival Church, designed by R.H. Robertson, with later additions and modifications by Herbert P. Upjohn. Building is listed on the New Jersey and National Register and is located within the first residential historic district. The applicant is proposing to construct a new portico with pediment adjacent to an existing one-story frame porch at the north elevation of the existing parish, parish office. In addition, a new brick trash enclosure, enclosure with gable roof and cast stone parapet 
is proposed to be constructed in the southeast corner of the existing parking lot located off Union Street adjacent to the existing parish offices. Um, uh, so the site description is such a famous building <laughs> and I'm starting to have to de describe it, but I will. It's located on the corner lot, uh, lo on the southeastern corner of the intersection of South Fullerton and Union. The property is currently developed with St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Um, and with the historic context, again, it is listed on both the National and State Register of Historic Places and um, the 2016 Historic Preservation Element of the Township Master Plan identifies this property for potential listing as a landmark within the township. So it's a um, very significant building and I think it's been well stewarded through the years. So looking forward to hear what the next uh, project is that you're doing. And um, I'm just checking to see we're here to uh, offer advice to the uh, planning board and the, the, uh, th th there's some setbacks which are the uh, variances from the rear yard and um, also uh, off street parking areas. But what we're looking at really is the design that, that, that you've, that, which is <coughs> very visible from um, Union Street, correct? Yes. 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 Okay, so if you would just um, uh, be, swear. Mr. Burt will swear you in and identify yourselves. Uh, can you identify mm -hmm. yourselves for the record? Certainly. Uh, Jackson Bangs, uh, architect for the applicant on behalf of Sionis Architecture at 8 Hillside Avenue, Montclair. And I'm John Manell, the rector of St. Luke's Episcopal Church, 75 South Fullerton. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, do we? Ha uh, is that the? It's us. Yes. Okay. So, um, who shall begin? Certainly. How about now? You're too tall. <laughs> <laughs> the light's green. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. No worries. Oh, that sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so before we get into the new project, we thought we'd briefly revisit uh, the two previous projects that we've shown to you over the last several years. Um, here on the left, you can see the door fronting Union Street uh, that was approved in 2019. It was finished uh, a couple of years ago and we're, we're very happy with how it looks. Um, on the left side, is the ramp accessing the undercroft of the church, which is being uh, renovated for use by Tony's Kitchen. As you can see, it's currently under construction. Uh, we really like how, how the change in grade is highlighting the existing archway, which was kind of an unexpected, pleasant surprise of the project. And we're also really happy with how the mason has integrated the stonework. Uh, believe it or not, in the photo at the bottom right, about half of that stone is, is, was recently installed. The other half has been there for a oh. 100 years. Um, so it, it turned out better than we could have hoped for. Um, 
So tonight we're here to discuss a project that sits in between these two other areas we've looked at previously. It's circled here in red. Um, it's the parking lot that's accessed off of Union Street and the areas immediately adjacent to it. Here are some photos of the building in the area. Uh, this building is not the 1889 church. It's the 1929 parish hall uh, and Sunday school, parish offices and Sunday school edition, which was built off of the older parish hall, which is the stone building on the right. And this building is built out of brick and stucco. Um, Father John, uh, could you discuss the project and why, why it's necessary? Yeah, the, the, the main elements of the project are, are the parking lot and the, and, the, the, and the dumpster enclosure and the colonnade. Uh, the parking lot has needed repaving for the better part of the last decade. The capital campaign, uh, break, our Breaking Down Barriers capital campaign of six years ago was, all, was planning to address it after we had finished some of these other projects because we'd want to be rolling our construction equipment across it. So it's certainly time for that. And the, the dumpster that's been on site um, for, the la for the last decade or so uh, needs to be enclosed in a way that brings it in, into conformity with, the town with township, township regulations. So those are, the, those are the two most important things that we wanted to accomplish in this, just really sort of aesthetic pieces to, to tidy up our parking lot. Uh, and then the third part, the, the colonnade, we, we had some ideas for potential use for that in the way that we're currently distributing food. Not as sure about that right now, but it, it provides some other aesthetic appeal to the entranceway coming into, into the lot in the way that uh, Jackson's drawn it up. So um, as John mentioned, the parking lot that serves the church, it's currently in, in pretty poor condition. Uh, and, and they've known for quite a while. That I actually personally poured the concrete in that one patch. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's had a few band-aids. <laughs> uh, so here, this proposed site plan shows the proposed refuse enclosure, which is in dark red on the right, the proposed colonnade, which is in a lighter red on the bottom in plan view, and the reconfigured parking lot. We did visit the, D the DRC last week, and based on that visit, we expect to make some minor changes to the parking lot configuration uh, based on their advice, but this still gives the general flavor of what we're proposing, and the buildings were unchanged uh, from the discussion with them. We haven't gotten a chance to revise it since speaking to them. This, this is a close-up of the proposed plan, which also shows the proposed north elevation. This is the view of the building that you'll see as you approach from Union Street. Um, because the only place that worked for the trash enclosure was on, the, was on one of the two fronts of the building, we really wanted to make it look attractive and not look like a refuse enclosure. One of the ways that we did that is we looked to the existing building for inspiration, and that's why the enclosure ha is a brick structure with a sloped roof and a raking parapet on the gable end. It echoes the structure that it's directly in front of. We'll also provide ventilation, which is important for any trash enclosure, through openings that are shaped like windows, but we'll have metal grills in them, as well as a louver on the gable end. To the right of the enclosure, you'll see a colonnaded porch. We set the intercolumniation to avoid blocking any of the existing windows on the building. And there's a, func um, there's a functional reason for this porch, which John mentioned. The other thing that I like about it is that it, it's something of a wayfinding uh, device for the site in that this proposed pediment is visible from Union Street which the existing entrances are not. So as, as someone approaches the church, they would be able to see where they're going, which is currently actually a big problem. A lot of people who are going to different doors have trouble figuring out which one to go to. So the, the, uh, the echoing of the existing <coughs> pediment off to the side is intentional, and in that this one relates to that one. Um, 
once someone's within the porch, um, they, they would look right and they would see signage directing them to, the, to Tony's kitchen and the parish offices. If they were to look left, they would see directory signage adjacent to the existing door. Um, the door is drawn here, uh, which serves the, as the access point to the various nonprofits that have their offices on the upper stories of the building. Um, you'll also see the other two elevations of the trash enclosure drawn here, uh, which are, are the front and back, functionally speaking. Uh, on the front, which resembles, as we say, a, a brick garage, um, it ha we have two wide openings, uh, which are both screened with metal, fen metal gates, which will have either a, a metal grill or a solid metal panel attached to the rear to screen the view of the gar of the, the garbage can, the dumpster, what and the recycling what bins, yeah. whatever, whatever is inside. And then on the <coughs> rear, uh, to provide some, to provide architectural interest as well as additional ventilation, uh, we're proposing two more of these openings, which will have, have grills inside of them. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you very much. Um, questions, Steve? I don't have any questions. John. Um, what's the colonnade for? The idea, the idea behind the colonnade is, is presently, as we're distributing food, we set out tables uh, in front of where that colonnade is right now right. Uh, in inclement weather. Uh, it, it's not ideal. Yeah, I was there today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, today is nice, but I was. Yeah. I see where they're setting up. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. So it's base, so they can set back underneath. There. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's my only question. And then the the um, the gable that you're proposing uh, uh, to the the right center um, double window. That, that th there's no doors proposed there, correct? No. It's just yeah. it's it's just the gable. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The the existing doors are to remain. Right. Okay, that's my question. My. Uh, I don't I don't have any questions. Thank you. Uh, we will go, Mr. Conley. So I did. I did have an, a, a few comments on on the proposed design. So it, my first reaction was that the proposed new pediment was in conflict with the existing pediment on the one-story frame porch that is to remain. Just I thought two of them was they were kind of conflicting, uh, even though they were at different scales. Um, and then the proposed roof slope. Right there was a roof transition right in your design yes yeah the transitionary slope um, you can maybe just barely see it on that section looking west that's because we come extremely close to the existing window sills of the second floor and we for obvious reason we don't want right. to uh, impact that yeah, it was it was hard to to, to notice, um, and it should be yeah. We we tried to find on the to notice. <laughs> for the public not not to hide it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was thinking, right, if if you reframed, got rid of the small pediment, and reframed that roof to the the lower slope, you could get it all to work, right? Because you're going to have a hard time matching all those roofs in such a small little area, and you're doing all this work. It, it was tricky. It was, yeah. it was not yeah. good. The, um, the overriding goal was actually to avoid interfering with the stone surround of the other door. Um, I guess I should show that. Um, but over here. And then. Uh, yeah, well, we wanted to stay well clear of, of this stonework to avoid potentially damaging it or concealing it. OK. Um, and then I, then I said some consideration should be given to the layout of the existing and proposed column spacing. Um, I forget. 
Was there a pilaster at the end, and there was kind of a space between the col the proposed column and the existing one story? Are there structure to remain? Yeah, there, there's like right the bracket that just kind of bears on mm, yeah the wall maybe there could be a half a column a pilaster there yeah or just shift it over perhaps Tom what page are you on uh, a1 a1 okay the elevation at the it's top a, of the it's up here yeah. the top of the elevation yeah. correct yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. There's a gap between eleven, uh, but uh, even on yeah. the other side, um, there is no <laughs> column there or yeah. pilaster. Or fill it. Or fill it, or in. fill it in. Yeah. Yeah. We're we we would be perfectly happy to rectify yeah, I'm that. Not, yeah. That makes sense. <coughs> but then th th there's a line in w at the roof too, right, where the two roofs are joined. So what's that line? The, because they're, they're supposed to be the um, same slope, right? The one story. Yeah, I I think that line is is there in error. Okay. We experimented with a lot of different slopes before matching the yeah. existing one. Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah. So a, a pilaster um, should be added, maybe at the uh, whatever. To the left side. Um, did you did you catch that though? The left side. Yeah, that considering a pilaster right. where we yeah. meet the existing ah. wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. Oh, and so uh, to, little, balance, to balance yeah. it on both yeah. sides. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And my last comment had to do with the trash enclosures, um, lintels. Right, they should be expanded to over the opening yeah at the trash enclosure right where you have the soldier course of the uh, at the head of the window on your trash enclosure right yeah yeah okay or is that the way they work on the existing building uh, that condition does Above not the window on the oh. second floor there I don't know if that's mm. if that's the that's way they how work how it's drawn we'll, yeah. we'll see if that's we'll the way they are then yeah. then you should follow um, that example yeah that's a newer building though, we'll right? look into yeah. it yeah, yeah that's, that's it, yeah. it that's definitely has structural steel yeah okay the original church does not yeah but all right that was thank it. you sorry um, Tom's comments about the pilaster on the left side to balance the. Yeah, I think that you know any th this is such a symmetrical building. project yeah. right. building. Right. You know, the, anything you can yeah. <laughs> okay. make it more. You know, just to make it match. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Where, you where, where are we talking? Here. Here. Really, yeah. historically, when this when this 1920s edition was put up, there was actually a Victorian house in the parking lot that I believe was torn oh. down about like 1982. So even even the side the side of the building that they were looking at from the Union Union seat facing, there are, you can see on the brick pattern where it was it was actually up against really? the Victorian house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's the reason why there's this massive brick wall with no windows, windows on it. Oh. Is that it right here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can see the you can shadow. See, you can see that you can see the, see the bricks a, sli see the a slightly different oh, color, yeah, right. and you can almost right. see the roof line about two thirds, three quarters yeah. of the way up. Yeah. Yeah. It was essentially a party wall. Yeah. Hmm. Are you proposing to use the same brick for these uh, for this colonnade as the base of this existing building? We plan to match it as closely as possible. It may be challenging to have an exact match. Um. um <coughs> to me, I, are we in the comment phase? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's 
couple things are odd to me about this. Uh, I mean, I understand the use of it, uh, and it's unfortunate. Yes, you're protecting the stone at one end, but you're closing up a window, right? In order yes. To do yes. That, right. So that window, window serves a bathroom. What's that? That window serves a bathroom. A bathroom. Oh, it's so we. Closed up. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I think the the. Uh, pediment or I don't know what we call it, the arched sort of expression in the colonnade is just very odd to me. That usually something like that announces a door behind it or something, you know. Uh, what it does do, it opens up the windows beyond. It's almost like you'd want to get a little arch over each one of those windows, but that's that's probably too much. I, I don't know. I, I'd almost get rid of that pediment. I, I find that and I also find it odd that it's a this arcade this um, colonnade. Yeah, what? They call it a colonnade. Colonnade. Colonnade mm -hmm. is an extension of the existing entry to the right, but it's made differently. You know, it seems to me you, if it's going to be a, an extension of what's to the right, it should be made in a similar fashion. With I don't know if those are six by sixes. Uh, you could group them together in pairs, whatever. It, that, that seems to me that would blend that together more. But that's, that's. Um, I don't have any problems with the garbage, uh, 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 the, the rubbish thing. I think that's fabulous that you're making that effort to do that. Oh, and my only other Tajma problem, dumpster is dumpster, how we're yeah, Tajma uh, dumpster uh, is uh, how we're referring uh, yeah, to I, it. I would, you know, I appreciate the first photographs you showed of the projects <laughs> you've done in the beginning of it, but I noticed how you, what you didn't show was the mechanical units that were part of that one of those projects on mm. the corner, which just come around the corner there. Yeah. I would encourage you to do something about those. Uh, it really detracts from everything else you've done. So I'm just throwing that out there. We, uh, we anticipate that the plants that were planted there two yeah, years ago that, will yeah. have only reached about half of their full height as of now. Mm -hmm. were, were those electrical panels around the corner always there? Stubbed up? The electrical the, the electrical panels on the surface were um, there was something there, there but we added we added some we of added, them. We, not it was modified. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was a public service showing up and changing right. everything and we wanted to do. Also there's wires that come from that. Yeah. The boxes on the what were windows. Yeah. And boom. You know, I got to believe some of that could be handled. I'm just throwing it out there. No, no, no. Sure actually, all very no, no, no. Those are great ideas. Yeah. And actually, actually, I think, I think those wires that are uh, the external wires, the boxes are the ones that are, that are powering the temporary refrigeration yeah. units in the parking lot that will be uh, remedied God, by the God. project okay. that we're underway. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. There, there's a pile of exterior wires okay. there that are not yeah, yeah, permanent. Okay. Yeah. One. Those are my comments. Thank you. Um, I I actually like the uh, pediment in the in the uh, colonnade. I think it um, it's such an eclectic building that it adds a bit of uh, I don't know maybe I hate to say whimsy in a religious sense, but it's okay. It does. <laughs> We're okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, but to Tom's point, uh, and I I think maybe trying to space out those uh, brick columns may uh, somehow, I don't know how, how you're going to be able to do well, that. Well, to John's point, then, I think they should look at, you know, the existing one-story structure and the new and see if they can get them to work together. They car they're carrying the same uh, cornice line across, so they could structure it underneath mm -hmm. in a similar fashion. Okay. Just to tie it together, you know, make it lighter. I, I just don't know. Yeah, um, and I think the uh, the other uh, points that you're doing with the uh, trash enclosure uh, is only an improvement. <laughs> Thank My. you. I like Taj Mahal trash also. I think it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I, I generally uh, I very, have very favorable uh, towards the design. So, yeah. Thank you. I don't have anything else useful to uh, offer you. So uh, I think we had, thank you, I think we had a few uh, recommendations. Tommy, have you been writing these? Uh, don't tell me no. Oh, I have. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Tommy's been diligently writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so it was to look at the pilasters um, of the colonnade and potentially revising them to better match the style of the covered entry to the right. Um, or work on the spacing of them or potentially add a pilaster to the left side, depending on how you guys want to approach that. Um, make the soldier course headers at the dumpster gates match those on the existing building. Um, I don't know if we want to talk about the, the pediment on the colonnade, maybe consider removing it, but that was kind of a split, mm. a split comment. Some, some like it, some didn't. Um, and that the HVAC units should be better screened. And since this is a site plan application, I think that that's probably an okay comment to make. To add to, to it. Okay. Yeah, I think with no doors behind the, the pediment there, um, it really makes no sense. Yeah. It makes no sense with no. Sense. Yeah. But clear but they're using people. but they're using it they're but using they're it they might be there. using it for something you know yeah. uh, else what an outdoor activity. Yeah, but uh, the, the colonnade is fine I think, and that still says go here right the colonnade you, you people are going to want to. But there's a nice cross on the top. It's a beautiful light fixture. The you idea can see was the windows and they're all the yeah, glory. Yeah. You know? yeah. The idea yeah. was to scream the door is this way. Mm -hmm. Even though you turn to see the door, um, that it would guide people. But I, I think in general, that's what a colonnade does, right? It, yeah. it says yeah. that there's an entry yeah. somewhere under that's there. Fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's come here. Yeah. <laughs> I know this has been an ongoing project, but it's, yes. it's uh, really been a great asset. So thank you. Thank you. OK. Thank you. All right, well, thank you thank very you. much. Yep. Thanks so much. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So there is no further business. But um, I, I, you know, I'm hearing about the, uh, the DCR, the Design Review Committee. That, that two people have, uh, development. development, I'm sorry, we have the design review. And somebody from the um, HPC should be on that, be sitting on that committee. I think the ordinance defines the makeup of that committee. I have, to, that I have to double check, but it doesn't include a, there's a planning board member, there's board of adjustment, mm -hmm. and then the board engineer, planning staff, that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. It just makes sense to have a HPC member on it. That, that well, not all site plan applications go to the HPC, so. Well, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase something that you know maybe you could put the HPC in the you know they don't have the people the person doesn't have to stay for the whole meeting just for the ones that are uh, okay. you know I, I can that come to, to us. You can talk to Janice about that. Yeah, not that anyone wants more work, right? <laughs> All right, um, it is uh, 1040, and we um, need a uh, motion to adjourn. And we will see everyone back here in September, uh, September 15th, which already uh, promises to be a, heavy, a big meeting. Uh, what's, so, what's coming up? Well, just the discussion on the uh, demo, oh, uh, demo right. ordinance, the residential design guidelines. Do we have any applications that you know of? We'll probably have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We will probably have more referrals, but I don't know. I have to check my memories. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, with that, no motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Oops.